I don't, uh, I don't like what I feel. I, uh, I feel anger. I'm, I'm, I'm experiencing anger, Snappy. Well, I, I'm, I'm sorry to hear that, Lester. <laughs> yes, you told me the plane couldn't fly. Well, well, that was my understanding, yeah. Uh, uh, frankly, I don't know how she did it. But, but I got one of them. I mean, one of them did, right there. Yeah, I told you I wanted them alive. Alive, yeah. Well, sometimes things don't always turn out like we want. I, I thought I saw some in you, Snappy. I thought I saw potential. Hey, Lester, I've been waiting for you all week. I'm busy, Randa. Hey, look at my new sandals. You like them? Tell her to go back inside. Randa, go inside, Randa. Hey, wait, listen, Lester. You know about the guys in the plane? They're going into the yard. I overheard them. You know, if we hurry up, we can catch up to them. Oh, my God, what happened to your face? You need to work on your personality. <laughs> Sorry, Snappy. Move out! What is real? How do you define real? If you're talking about what you can feel, what you can smell, what you can taste and see, then real is simply electrical signals interpreted by your brain. Have you ever been in an institute? Cells. Cells. Do they keep you in a cell? Cells. Cells. When you're not performing your duties, do they keep you in a little box? Cells. This causes it. This causes it. This causes it. Information overload. All the electronics around you poisoning the airwaves. You are listening to the High Tech Low Life Podcast, a cyberpunk media retrospective. High Tech Low Life contains language and themes not suitable for all audiences, as well as spoilers for the content being covered. Listener discretion is advised. Welcome back, everybody, to the High Tech Low Life podcast with your hosts, Eric and Josh. I'm Eric. And I'm Josh. So glad to be back and so glad this week to uh, welcome a first time guest, this is a big one. Um, one of the hottest podcasts burning <laughs> up it? the charts. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I hear about it all the time. Of course, I'm I'm I am a little bit into that world, but uh, a <laughs> little. Anyway, we've got uh, Ben from Pink Fohawk. Hello, thank you guys for having me. Yes, uh, and thank you for recommending us and doing. Our, you, I mean, you're a large portion as to why I think many people know about us. As many I people like, that do, I like to consider myself an OG pink full hawk fan you definitely are I, I you guys were very small when i stumbled upon you and i knew instantly that you wouldn't remain small because you're very funny and not just funny you're like creative and well edited and all the things a hit podcast needs to be oh my god all well, the yeah, things I'm that coming. we are not we, we aspire <laughs> to be <laughs> I'm, I'm definitely coming back after that that was very <laughs> flattering uh but thank you yes and yeah you were you were like one of my our fans like when we had like four twitter followers and you were like retweeting stuff i was like who's this guy's sweet i was listening to johnny mnemonic and i, I was yeah i was with, well, following you guys too so thank you this is a huge uh honor thank you for having me on here this is awesome strangely enough um i think i found you on twitter i think it i think that was how i probably saw pink faux hawk that uh, sounds possible because we we just had we both just had piles of follows of completely random mm-hmm. cyberpunk or shadow run related stuff yeah it's a weird and, space because you is. can't quite <laughs> count it all like you think like wow okay we've got some followers but like they're not fucking listening to you <laughs> yeah it's <laughs> It, yeah, we. I check our downloads, and I'm like, I know who we have interactions with, and our downloads are quite a bit higher than that. I'm like, who are these other people? They're got to be all be bots, right? <laughs> Definitely. Just, there's like a, it's a, thousands it's a... of bots out there downloading <laughs> podcasts every day. <laughs> well, what, what's you bots? <laughs> Who's uh, Lisbon? Is that your host? It's Lipson, the Lisbon yeah. bot. Yeah, it's Lipson a, bots. Lipson bots. Gibson. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but um, uh, yeah, I forgot. I was gonna say I had something else, but. I'm I'm excited because Pink Fox doing well, man. Like I see you guys, 
Yeah. You're on Reddit. You're on uh, Twitter. You're getting your any award nominated. <laughs> did you win the any? I can't remember. <laughs> we did not win. <laughs> but that was that was a trip, dude, because we didn't even know really what it was. I just kind of submitted to like two different uh, like I just searched like podcast, like actual play podcast awards. I submitted it to two of them. We did audio verse and we did innies. Mm-hmm. And most of that was just because we we we'd missed the deadline already by the time I figured out how to do any of that. Sure. So uh, we, we won awards for the audio verse, which was crazy. And then any's we got nominated and nominated to get nominated. You have to be nominated by the judges, but then to win, you have to have popular vote. And that wasn't happening. Yeah. <laughs> so I mean, I got, voted. So just, well, yep. thank you. <laughs> they, they, that we got destroyed, but uh, we were, we felt like we won already. That was pretty awesome. So uh, it was been, a, it's been a cool, we're only, you guys have been through two sweet podcasts and the amount of time it's taken us to get through a season and a half of ours. We're so, you guys are like furnace of ambition and we're like lazy assholes just like we're, sitting around. We're kind of old school. Like we got started in 2015 was our first show. Um, and yeah, the truly terrifying thing about that is nowadays we think that we are being lazy and <laughs> yeah, we we trained ourselves like we did. We did not miss a week for five years. That is amazing. Even when I was like going on overseas vacations uh, and everything, and we would plan ahead, and uh, yeah, we don't I'd do that to, anymore. I'd go do archaeology in the desert for like a month and a half at a time, so we'd cram in like six episodes over the course of five days. Oh shit! But here's that, the that thing: was Dawson's Creek, right? That yeah. was the Dawson's Creek yeah, show. Yeah. yeah. Um, I. I don't think you have to do that anymore. Like back no. then, th- there was a small audience you were trying to get a, a slice of, mm-hmm. uh, like a small amount of people listening to podcasts. Um, I hate that Pink Fohawk comes out on its schedule because I want to listen to it every week. <laughs> yeah, but I don't think it hurts you at all. Like the the build up can definitely be a good thing. I have I feel like I, I've noticed that too, especially the sort of the way we're you know we're it's a story, right? So it's like. Like you said, it's you can kind of cliffhang something mm-hmm. and people will maybe listen to it a couple of times before the next one releases if it takes a month or so. So it's not like uh, I I was worried it was going to start hurting our listenership, but it hasn't. It's kind of actually helped. It really helped between our two seasons. It definitely builds hype because uh, now when I see that tweet drop or the Discord uh, message tag it's like oh sick i get to listen to pink fog this week i'm excited <laughs> so. we we, try, we go off of like the larry david schedule basically we're like yeah. we'll make it another season when we think you're, we can get it there but you're retired until they give you another 20 million dollars <laughs> yeah yeah it basically we're having a nervous breakdown of whether we can actually continue it <laughs> between seasons like larry david does well the you have to enjoy it to keep doing it because yeah. no i mean people are getting rich podcasting, but nobody at our level is getting rich podcasting. So you have to do it out of love. And if it becomes too much work, then why are we here? So yeah, yeah, you, 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 you know, yeah, exactly. You kind of, you move that slider to adjust to make it work. You know, you're like, okay, this is a little hard. Let's take it easy. Let's not get crazy. And um, so it's been good. So um, for people that don't know, I guess I should say what Pink Fawak is. It's yeah, a, yeah. an actual play <laughs> podcast for Shadowrun, and we play second edition, the best uh, Shadowrun. So the best edition. That, that's what roped me in, and I uh, maybe I'm an outlier on that. But when I saw these guys were playing second edition, I'm like, I gotta give that a shot. That's my edition. <laughs> yeah, that's that's what we. That, we're talking skill shit. webs. <laughs> that was another thing that was scary because I, I didn't see anybody doing it. So then I was like, am I, is it, are we just like going to be dead in the water? Are we going to like, people hate us? And then it like, it was crazy. So like, you're not alone. Like there were a ton of s- six sleeper shadow run players that were just like sleeper agents, like waiting to activate. Yeah. <laughs> and then, and they just like have either, they love shadow run, but like either the newer editions just weren't speaking to them or whatever, just that you kind of got busy or whatever, like this kind of woke them up and got them back into it, which is pretty cool. So we have sort of that old school fan base, which is awesome. Yeah. You you tripped the hatchet man siren and everybody came out of the woodwork. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. I don't know why I picture the first level of Resident Evil 2 or Resident (laughs) Evil 4, sorry, Resident (laughs) Evil 4. But uh, yeah, we just like got all these, they just came out of the woodwork, which was really cool to see. And that's like, 
I, I, my, my kind of shadow run story super quick is that I, I loved it as a kid. I never played the tabletop game, but I played the Genesis game. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. And I, that was like the vibe that I fell in love with. And then when I finally started to come to playing tabletop games later in life, like they didn't, it didn't feel the same. Like, I was just like, I don't really, this is it. This is it. And then when I realized someone told me, Hey, play second edition, you should check that out. It all clicked. Like that was the edition that was around. And that's what, yeah, the game was kind of based on. Yeah. And so, yeah, it's, it's kind of this, uh, it's what so that's like to me it's the coolest thing to hear people that played in like the ni- early 90s and played second edition they're like this is exactly what it felt like when i listened to your show it's like the best compliment ever it, so. it is man like it, it, yeah <laughs> it's it reminds me so much of our shenanigans as you know young 20 something idiots <laughs> crashing helicopters into buildings and just you know railing the yeah. car shapes <laughs> yeah it's it brings back memories listening memories that didn't necessarily have but uh, yeah it's like memories that you guys are reenacting for me so right characters yeah, flame throwing somebody while smoking a soy gar soy gar yeah we in my old campaign we had soy gars everything oh, was soy gars <laughs> that's amazing okay so on this show we like to we're a show about dystopias so we like to talk about our modern dystopia just to bring it down a little bit uh-huh, sounds uh-huh. like a mm-hmm. great uh-huh. idea um josh is <laughs> <laughs> Has there been anything in the last couple of days that you might call dystopian happen? Oh, I don't know. Um, maybe a uh, well. There, there was this uh, drone and missile missile thing. What? Um, like a sovereign country launching 150 drone no. swarm at another country is dystopian and cyberpunk in, in retaliation for the first country or for the second country bombing the embassy of the first country. Yes. <laughs> very dystopian, <sighs> very cyberpunk. Uh, mm-hmm. Not in a cool way. We don't hate like it, it already. Yes. <laughs> uh, crazy news though. Yeah. 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 That was fun last night where I like, I like just didn't get on my phone for a number of hours. And then I opened up, uh, I opened up Blue Sky and I'm like, oh, is, is World War Three kicking off right now? Huh. Twitter definitely thought it was. It was like the top three <laughs> trending topics. Uh, because there's a lot of people out there that are just horny for World War Three. Oh, yeah. They really are. World War Three yeah. and Civil War. They want it so bad. Yeah. They want to be, yeah, they want to be right about all this shit they've been <laughs> spouting for three or four years. Yeah. There's and going to be a war. If it happens, I don't think they're going to be happy. No, they don't it, know what that means. It doesn't seem like it would be war. good. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. You, you don't get to do like your Burger King Wednesdays. <laughs> <laughs> you dumbasses. Wait, you know? what about what about the Marvel cin- Cinematic Universe Civil War? Oh, uh, that that would. <laughs> this is post probably nice segue. <laughs> probably still get rid of the uh, Burger King Wednesdays. Yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> This Burger King just disappears. <laughs> what about 2024 Alex Garland's uh, Kirsten Dunst <laughs> Civil War? <laughs> oh, shit. Uh, well, we, we've segued into uh, uh, recommendos now. Thanks, Josh. We don't need to talk anymore <laughs> about the horrible things happening in the world. You know, the horrors. Uh, that Go was ahead. beautiful. <laughs> the horrors, yeah, to bring it back to Shadow on an Earth. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> Turns out the horrors were humanity all along. Yeah. <laughs> I was um, up late last night making a fourth edition at Earth Dawn character. I still haven't done it. Oh, really? Yeah, I'm trying to get into it. I mean, it's it, it's pretty fun. Okay, sorry. You should, you want to continue your podcast? I mean, <laughs> I also Look, desperately I'm, I'm, want to hear this. But I'm, yeah. I'm happy if you want if you want to do a recommendo for Earth Dawn. <laughs> I will recommend fourth edition Earth Dawn. Is that the all, newest one? That's the newest one, okay. and it's, it's by New Fasa. The comp- was, it's Fasa, but you know, new yeah. company basically. Um, and it's, it's interesting to go back to Shadowrun for a sec. It's, it's interesting because you go into the discord or you go into Reddit and you ask people, Hey, which edition should I play? Which you see on most of these yeah. old games all the time. And there's almost a near unanimous, like fourth edition. And it's hmm. really nice. Hmm. They're just kind of all like, you should do fourth. It's really cleaned up and it's pretty all much all there. And they, they, they harken back to first and second edition in the right areas and, and add optional rules for some of the crunch that was in the older ones. But fourth edition. I supported that Kickstarter and have the two main books on my bookshelf behind me. I've never had a chance to play them. Mm -hmm. 
but uh, was happy to support that Kickstarter when it popped up. Because it has the name Earth Dawn on it. Because mm-hmm. <laughs> as much as I love Shadowrun, I also, uh-huh. I also love Earth Dawn. You did the passion's work that day, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> and like, it's funny if you, we can't, we can't talk about Earth Dawn. We'll talk about it later. <laughs> Like that's my it. recommendo. That's it's, my recommendo. It's a good Bring it back to your podcast. <laughs> um, Josh, do you have one? Uh, I do. I watched the uh, Fallout television series. Oh, yeah. Mm. I've heard good things. I haven't started it yet. As someone who has never played a Fallout game, I thought it was pretty okay. Oh, that's an interesting perspective. I mean, uh, I... I think, uh, you know, a huge amount of the weight is being carried by Walton Goggins... Um, and mm. Ella Purnell in two of the three lead roles. Yeah, uh, they're both given uh, they're both given great performances uh, with pretty good material. Um, and then they're like they did a really smart job of bringing in a ton of like really good one or two episode kind of guest stars to just fucking back clean up like Chris Parnell for an episode and a half is a fucking one-eyed mutant. Awesome. Wow. I mean, or, uh, you know, there's just tons of, you know, tons of just nonsense bullshit going on. And it's, uh, it's pretty fun. And it was not like the main thing I was worried about was, uh, going into it and being like, Oh, video game stuff, video game stuff, video game stuff, Mm -hmm. you know, where they just hammer it with references. And, there were times at which I was like, oh, that must be something from the video game. Yeah. But it wasn't, I mean, like it didn't fucking bug me. Um, so, yeah, re- recommended. Um, so nice. I'll be watching the second season, assuming they do one. Sounds like they will. It's pretty popular. Yeah, seems like. I got like three texts from three different people that were like, are you watching Fallout? And I know two of them have never played a video game in their lives. So wow. that's pretty interesting. Yeah, I'm. That's uh, the barrier they have to break for sure. Mm-hmm. I think uh, the th- one of the things that kind of struck me about it is because I've never like I've literally never played Fallout, and that's kind of odd in that I've been at least adjacent to computer video gaming spaces for thirty fucking years. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like that's one I, of the big ones for sure. It is. I recognize a little bit of the iconography, like the little, you know, uh, the thumbs up guy in the blue yellow suit. I go, oh, that's mm-hmm. a fallout thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or the uh, the Brotherhood of Steel giant stormtrooper armor night guys. Mm-hmm. And, but that's about it. Like, that's literally all I know about fucking fallout. I don't know the difference. Well, up until I started watching the show, I didn't know the difference between it and Borderlands. I mean, mm-hmm. it seems like the same shit to me. Uh, there's a Borderlands show being made too, I believe. I believe it's a movie. Oh my god, <laughs> oh, it's a movie. Okay, yeah. Uh, and uh, a an acquaintance of ours, I believe, has at least a cameo. Uh, Rissy's old friend Blythe, who played, oh. yeah, she's uh, she's been doing voiceover. She was working for the uh, studio that made Borderlands. Oh, cool. Nice. Um, that's right. She was. was she might have been in one of the games too, right? Yeah, she's oh, been in a couple. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I like it's a it's a weirdly large blind spot for me, um, and I I did not feel it hindered my enjoyment like I do with some things that are like that, where they're just clearly weighted towards. Uh huh. You saw this, right? You've seen this. Yeah, you mm-hmm. probably wouldn't have cared for the Warcraft movie. Uh, I tried to watch the Warcraft movie about six or eight months ago, <laughs> and my God, uh, I like. I really enjoyed some of Duncan Jones's movies like a yeah. lot. Yeah. Um, and that was in fucking tolerable. <laughs> <laughs> I liked it. <laughs> I, I, I do not know. Like I was sitting there going, this is like a badly acted cut scene. <laughs> I mean, yeah, no, no. If I, you, if you'd seen blizzards cutscenes for Warcraft, they're much better than that movie. I, it was <laughs> it was mystifying to me because I think we talked about like you and I talked about it on some podcast. Yeah, we, we just like mentioned. It. I was like, oh, I'll give that a shot, and then fuck no, dude. <laughs> yeah, it was a uh, it was a failure and on every level. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> on every level. But fun if you if you spent your 
20s playing World of Warcraft like I did. It was fun to see all that stuff on a movie. Um, okay, I have a recommendo. Uh, it's probably my most emphatic recommendo this year. Ooh. And that is uh, please watch Monkey Man as soon as you can. Oh, it's yeah. oh. so, it's so good. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm pretty excited to see that. Yeah, I we went on, <laughs> did a 10 a.m. matinee on Friday. Nice. And that's um, the way to do it. Yeah, there was almost nobody in there. And you can fuck your popcorn bucket to your heart's extent. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, Yeah. that's true. No monkey man popcorn buckets, unfortunately. Uh, Oh, disappointing. (laughs) 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 I've seen the trailer. It's I I I need a fuckable popcorn bucket. Come on. Apparently the the Dune like ad execs are like we did not intend for that and we would not have put out if we'd known that was going to happen and I'm like fuck you dude that's the best thing that could have possibly yeah. happened to you that, that is that is grassroots <laughs> marketing my friend uh, but think of Mon- I mean I hate to compare Monkey Man to John Wick because it's so much better than John Wick but um, you know the comparisons are obvious they even Monkey. like shout out John Wick Keanu in the Reeves. beginning of the movie. But like, think of that only if instead of fighting like just some some nameless shadow organization, he was like actually fighting bad guys, like rich people and bigots and you India's know, ruling party and India's ruling party and transphobes and all, all the people that you would like to fight. Oh, sick! Um, yeah, there it's it's just a beautiful film with a lot of violence in it, uh, and the violence is they don't do that thing where they're like violence is bad, <laughs> like violence is necessary here let's do as much of it as possible way to be <laughs> anyway nice. sounds fucking punk rock man it's that's pretty sweet. punk rock um and yeah that's that's my recommend all which, right which i believe unless josh has another one brings us to the meat i i have one real quick one okay um it is not cyberpunk in any way or sci-fi fantasy or anything uh i watched the ripley series uh mm. that believe it or not or alien <laughs> Yes. Sorry, that's a joke from last week. Oh, made, the, made the yeah. exact same joke. Yeah. Um, on uh, Netflix, it is pretty goddamn good. Oh. Like, it's uh, very beautiful. Um, and I don't know. I'd like to see them adapt the other Ripley books uh, because I think partially, uh, I don't know if, I don't, I'm not even sure. Uh, Eric, did you see The Talented Mr. Ripley, 1999? I believe it was on in the background. Uh, you and one of our other friends were watching it while I sure. probably like rizzed up somebody on uh, an internet forum in sure. 1997 <laughs> or whatever. Yeah, let's go Rebel with that. Rising. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, actually, it was probably dark forums. Go ahead. It's probably dark um, forum. Yeah. Uh, okay. So one of the things with the talented Mr. Ripley, and I don't know, are you familiar with it, Ben? Yes, it's been a long time. I also, yeah. I, I probably I, was also doing the same thing Eric was. <laughs> yeah, I, I haven't seen the movie since then. So, but the uh, I've read the Ripley books quite a bit. Um, and the thing with the talented Mr. Ripley is all the characters are really young. They're all like 22 to 25, maybe. Um, right. And in this adaptation, um, like they're all, I don't know, generously late thirties, um, which casts a slightly different light on it, um, and makes it kind of weirder because a bunch of the characters are just sort of trust fund babies who are, you know, wandering around sparing, spending their parents money. Mm -hmm. But I, I understand why they did it. Um, because I think the plan was initially to do, um, a separate series, a separate uh, season for each of the books. And between the first book and the second Ripley book, there's like a 15 year time jump. So they were kind of casting it for the second through fifth seasons, but it's a little off putting watching a bunch of things should have done that. Oh God, Jesus (laughs) Christ, dude, those kids, those kids are going to be like 45 through 14 divorces. It's already canceled, but Um, yeah, if they kept going, Oh, I'm assuming by the time the next season comes out. No, they they've already canceled it because wow. of that. I think. Yeah, I think I think the Probably next wise. season is supposed to be the last. They were they were watching Family Matters on Netflix. They were like, "We gotta kill this before 
<laughs> like Urkel got just too old. <laughs> <laughs> we should not make the same mistake. Urkel's never too old. <laughs> Those were some high pants for a 20 something dude. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, but yes, so, so the Ripley, they, the time jump, they tried to sort of. Yeah, they tried to shoot for that, and I don't know if they'll ever actually get a second season, but it's fucking beautiful. I mean, it's uh, this beautiful black and white photography. Yeah. I didn't realize there was like a universe to it, like a like a uh, saga. Yeah, I thought it was yeah. just a movie. Me too. Yeah, um, yeah. There are uh, uh, five books, I think either five or six books written by uh, Patricia Highsmith back in the, oh, I think the first one was published in like 1958 or something. Wow. Damn. Yeah. Um, and uh, they're all really good. And they, I mean, the main character is Tom Ripley, who is a sociopath con man. Talented um, guy, I've heard. Yeah, <laughs> yeah he's quite talented. Okay. Um, and yeah, uh, they, they've made several other movies of it, one of which uh, has, let's see, one star Barry Pepper in like 2005, probably. And then... Oh, Ripley Underground starred uh, Tom, uh, John Malkovich as huh. Ripley, and there there have been several others. Uh, anyway, uh, I have yeah. no idea. Uh, yeah. I recommend those books. They're uh, they're very good. Yeah. Well, they're not cyberpunk, so I won't be reading them. <laughs> oh, you can't read. <laughs> <laughs> it's the ongoing bit. All right, uh, uh, we have to talk about. Well, sorry, we get to talk about Cherry Two Thousand <laughs> Honor. Get to. Um, suggested to us by our guest when we asked oh, him to God. come on the show <laughs> yeah <laughs> so um yeah we would normally take a break here but we don't have a commercial to play so cherry 2000 what do we think guys starts off a little sus and then by <laughs> part way through you're kind of like sus. you're like wait a minute do i like this and then by wait the a, end you're like wait a minute does this rule was, was that good i think that was yeah. good is this the best movie I've ever seen? <laughs> yeah, I would say uh, that it, it comes off at first just almost like it like it fails on every front, mm -hmm. right? You're kind of like, yeah. oh, this is trying to be like a Escape from New York slash Johnny Mnemonic slash Mad Max slash Warriors, but failing at, at all levels. Definitely, yeah. There's <laughs> a lot of Mad Max uh, oh, energy. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, what I figured out, um, and this is kind of, I, I was going to wait for kind of the end of the movie before I said this, mm -hmm. but uh, I will probably forget. Uh, this is a movie that is trying to go for what Tank Girl did much more successfully. Not that Tank Girl is a completely successful film by any means, but... It is definitely trying for a Tank Girl vibe mm -hmm. way before Tank Girl. Mm. I could see that for sure. Um, yeah, I didn't realize I, I started to. Well, I'll wait till we get there. But I, ha I started to pick up on I was like, oh, I think it's trying to say something. And then like, I think maybe, probably you guys had the same feeling. But then by the end, you're like, oh, OK, now it's really on the nose about what it's trying to say. But then it's like by the very end, I'm like, I think it did a good job saying it. <laughs> I mean, well, the, the end, the beginning is definitely like, whoa, what are we doing? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Very and, chauvinist feeling. Yeah. Weird energy at first. And it's the 80s. So you're like, uh, just to, <laughs> it's you're right to assume it's going to continue like that throughout. Yeah. We're like, OK, I guess we roll with it. I don't know. <laughs> right. And, and maybe it's not aware of it. That's yeah. the really weird thing at first. You're like, oh, maybe this is just 80s. <laughs> I kept watching this thinking like, like, obviously, like the worst part about it is I would say the performances, the acting oh, is not great, but like the world building is pretty good. The story is pretty interesting. Like I kind of want a remake of it. I kind of want a uh, modern yeah. take on it. I, I would love to see a remake of this. Um, like even, even if you had the same fucking actors, like mm -hmm, giving mm -hmm. effectively the same performances that this movie had the clearest example that I can maybe point out, like, if we just had a fucking YouTube channel, we could yeah. run it down. The This movie was shot and edited really, really badly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, it is, watching it through the second time for notes, I mean, like, 
I was sitting there going like, okay, how did they make this action scene incredibly boring? Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. There, because there are a bunch of action scenes. Like the first real action scene is when they run the barricade. Yeah. <laughs> and th- it's honestly impressive how there is absolutely no tension in yeah. two characters crashing a 1965 Mustang through fire barrels and people yeah. shooting machine <laughs> yeah. guns at them and like all sorts of crazy shit. And you're just like, the characters are doing a thing. There, yeah. There's no, they don't manage in, and then it goes on. Like all the action scenes are that way. There's just yeah. nothing to them. There's just like, okay, stand there, hold the submachine gun, fire towards the camera. Yeah. Right. Shake it a lot. Yeah. You, you can and, tell there's like total, like, I don't know, incompetence behind the camera. Like they're not putting the camera in a meaningful place and they're not, you're right. They're the editing. Yeah. Like it's, you could build that tension. You're, you're, you're doing the thing. You're shooting sweet machine guns and a car is driving through fire. Yeah. Yeah. Sick ass car. And, and like the, where they cross the river. Okay. Like in inherently that is an extremely cool scene yeah okay. yeah you're, yep. you're being dragged across a river by a fucking electromagnet <laughs> on a crane and like 45 people are shooting rockets at you <laughs> and that you're was... shooting rockets back and the only rockets that matter are the ones she shoots which was funny to me <laughs> ones were direct hitting her car next to her She's yeah fine. and <laughs> it's like incredible how like Literally everything. The way I just described that scene is much more exciting than yeah. it actually was. There like, was there was no like sense of danger. No, yeah, it's I mean, all just the, the things were that... happening. It's just it was just the yeah the the cadence of it and just the yeah yeah. It, you, it's you, you I would a director that knew how to tell that I would, visual. I would story. love to see an actual director or an editor just mm-hmm. dismantle that yeah. and take it apart like. Why isn't this working? Because I know enough to know, okay, these are the things that are wrong with it, Mm -hmm. but I don't know exactly, like, I don't know exactly how to describe that. You want the Snyder Cut. Yeah. Yeah. I want the the Snyder (laughs) Snyder Cut of Cherry 2000. Uh, Cherry 2000. uh, Speaking of the director of this film, it's a guy named Steve DeJarnett. Mm. Um, And would you like to know a little something about him? Sure. Would you like to know more? He yes. is from Overland Park, Kansas. <laughs> Whoa! Oh, God. So we have a heavily Kansas City-based <laughs> program today. And now it makes a lot of sense. <laughs> <It's kismet. laughs> we oh. got to find this guy. I feel like it's like the, <laughs> he's the out Big Lebowski somewhere. scene where he's in like the Iron Lung. Oh, Maybe. no, wait. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, it, wasn't the, it wasn't the director. It was the writer, Michael oh, okay. Almeda- Almereda. That's actually better uh, because the... I. The writing wasn't the writing bad. Wasn't bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we should probably enact some type of heist to uh, get him to remake this. Yes, or at least remake yes. it. Yes, absolutely. We need to force him. We need to find compromising photographs and tell him he needs to rewrite this thing or make this happen again. <laughs> I'm sure they're yeah. out there. It was the '80s. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, one more, <laughs> probably on set <laughs> photos. <from> set. <laughs> yeah, yeah. One more thing before we dive into the recap. Um. There are so many people in this movie mm-hmm. from other yes. movies we've covered on this podcast or will we'll cover. cover. I feel like every scene had a that guy in it that I know is in another cyberpunk movie. Yeah. That we're yeah. going to get to. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's honestly, yeah, it was surprising <laughs> watching this fucking movie. <laughs> These two th- points too are, are interesting because to me it was like you could see, you could almost see the, the budget. Yeah. Like you could see where they saved it. And those areas you're talking about, and then where they blew it, like where they were like, okay, no, but this scene is where we really need to be putting all the money into, or okay, we need to get Lawrence Fishburne, or we need to get, you know, yeah, <laughs> like they, they just did got. You mean like, the guy from Pee Wee's Playhouse? Why do we want that guy? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. He wasn't anything yet, really. <laughs> I guess he wasn't. Wasn't he in? Uh, he was in Apocalypse Now. Apocalypse that Now, was big deal. Ten years beforehand. Yeah, that's yeah. true. He still wasn't anything. But yeah. he was, his role was, was so small. This was a little bit before he really kicked off. I'm trying to think. So let's see. This was 87 slash 88. Um, let's see. God damn. Guy has a hell of a career. A lot they of got the credits. They got the replicant uh, from from Blade Runner. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, Brian James. 
who's also right. in Nemesis, which we were mentioning to you. Oh, interesting. Off, off yeah. Air. yeah he's, yeah. Leon. He's a, yeah, Leon. Yep. He's at the beginning. He's, well, probably not this episode, but most our normal episodes, he is the opening clip of our intro. Oh, that's... <laughs> I'll tell you about yeah, my yeah. mother. I'll tell you about my mother. Oh, that's um, uh, let's see. Prior to uh, prior to this movie, uh, the most recent thing that Lar- Lawrence Fishburne or Larry Fishburne, as he was credited at the at the mm-hmm. time, Nightmare on Elm Street Three: Dream Warriors. Oh, good one. Hey, <laughs> that might be considered the worst. I think of the Nightmare on Elm Street. Is it? I couldn't tell you. <laughs> uh, I have another question uh, before we go on. How did you guys watch this? Did you? Did we all watch it on Amazon? Yep. Free V. Yes. Josh? Amazon Prime. Mm, don't don't worry about it. Okay, well, I'm well, the reason I ask is because uh, I've got the IMDb pulled up. There's like a trailer playing, and mm-hmm. there's something on the trailer that was not in the version I watched. Um, oh. I can mention it when we get there. It's near the end of the movie. Um, so I'm wondering if the freebie version that I watched and that Ben watched was edited for oh. something. Oh. I'm curious. You might have watched a slightly different version. Oh. Is it uh, the flying into the pond? Yes. Thing? That's okay. I that heard. wasn't in my version either. Okay. Well, maybe that's just made okay. the trailer and not the maybe yeah, not the movie. Ha. Huh. Anyway, um, do you want to start a recap? We usually go kind of just recap the whole movie and then riff on it as best we Absolutely. can. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So the movie starts. Um, we have some very sexy 1987 Cinemax softcore credit sequence, <laughs> which lasts shockingly a short amount of time. It was very like uh, the 12 year old boy in me was awakened by these. Oh, my God. Credits. Yeah, <laughs> it, was, was, it was Barbarella all over again. Yeah, yeah. it's sexy lady dancing in silhouette. Yeah. <laughs> It That's was. I, I was on the couch next to my wife. She's watching her TV show, and I had this on a laptop in my lap, and I had to like adjust a bit away so that <laughs> I, just, I, I just felt like that exactly, like Cinemax. At yeah. night. you get embarrassed. <laughs> yeah, definitely some embarrassment. My my wife came in while I, was, I had thirty minutes left, and she seemed to be into the last thirty minutes. That's understandable because that they're pretty good. They really are. <laughs> but I was trying to explain it. I'm like, well, you see, this guy's looking for his robot <laughs> wife, and he hired this lady to track his robot wife into the wastelands. Who's that guy? Well, he's the boss of the wasteland. <laughs> yes. He is the Very Lord Humongous, if you will. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, except he's like, he really wants you to believe in yourself and use sunblock. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I love how your wife's walking away like, that's a sweet movie. <laughs> The way it's like when it's when it's condensed, it is a cool story. Like you said, the writing's good. Yeah. Okay, so we have our main character, um, a guy named Sam Treadwell, who's played by actor David Andrews. Who Treadwell? We, Sam Treadwell. Did I? No, did, I just he says that ten thousand times. Oh yeah. yeah okay. Sam okay. I was like, did I Treadwell. not say that? Because I just read it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, he's played by an actor named David Andrews, who we will see again on uh, Judgment in- Day. He's in Judgment Day. He is a general in Terminator 3. <laughs> the bad guy general. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, and uh, he lives in a cool future apartment. Mm-hmm. Very cool. Sunken um, kitchen. I'm, I'm yeah, into Yeah. A sunken kitchen, a dishwasher that <laughs> imitates a sex scene somehow. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's like imagine if you had a dishwasher that was a train going into a tunnel. <laughs> yeah, um, bubbles over with passion. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so he's a, he's got this cool future apartment, and he's doing a nice flirtation with his sexy wife. Uh, she has prepared a uh, burger and fr- uh, crinkle cut fries and green beans for his fancy dinner. <laughs> um, yeah, looks good. Yeah, looks delicious. Yeah, um, he says it's delicious, and he gets to take one bite of it. Yeah, yeah. Um, and she's just like telling him fun facts, like, "Oh, Vaseline was invented in America," and then uh, they have a uh, real hot fuck scene where they're laying on the floor of the sunken kitchen, and the dishwasher explodes, and suddenly you're like, "Oh my god, she's a robot!" because she just shorted out. They're 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 too into it to uh, even think about the possible danger. Yeah. yeah, intertwined yes. as one, and uh, yeah, she's <laughs> as she's it, <laughs> she's un 
unalived. <laughs> yes. That's what you got to say for the algorithm. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so it I tr- also also it was interesting that you said she's bringing up these these uh, these fun facts at the table, right? And there's that weird uh, like there's that weird tension, right? Like yeah. one moment. Yeah, she she asks she's like, them, "Would you asks, like dessert?" <laughs> he asks yeah. her who invented Vaseline, and she doesn't know, and she gets really upset about not knowing. Yeah, yeah, it was that was a cool. I was like, okay, there's something there. But yeah, and I then I feel like she pivoted to sex with him. To yeah, yeah, to because she's substanceless, right? <laughs> yeah. To change change the mood. <laughs> yeah, I love her so much. Her scenes in the end are so. She killed it. Yeah, she's <laughs> yeah. amazing in it. She might be the best actor on the movie, honestly. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Like, honestly, the last half of this fucking movie is just fire and it is dragged down by the front half so badly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, even and, and it, even though there's action, some hilarious, insane sense. shit in yes. the first half as well. <laughs> yes. But it <laughs> makes the first half make sense. It's one of those weird things where it's like, God help me. I'm, I don't know why I'm comparing this to like Dune, the book, but it's like how Dune, the language doesn't make sense. And then you get to like mm-hmm. the very end and you're like, oh, now I know what that word means. Yeah. Like it starts to make the beginning make sense. It's, it's, yeah. in, a, in a way, Cherry 2000 is, <laughs> is the same way. Cherry, and it's also on that level of literary. Absolutely. Ben, yes. <laughs> what, what Ben is saying is that Cherry 2000 <laughs> is exactly as good as Denis Villeneuve's Dune films. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but imagine Denis Villeneuve remaking oh, yeah. Cherry 2000. Oh, the dream. Oh, see? That's what I was... If oh, I was a director like admit. him, I would do that shit just for the challenge. I would love to see Javier Bardem as uh, uh, Lester. Yeah, the old man, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, as the cult leader. The bad you know, guy. The, oh, the Lord Humongous. I was thinking the, the old... The old uh, uh, Snap six Tom? Fingers, oh, six Jack, finger Jack. Six finger Jack. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Josh. You probably you, you, you want to get back to the recap. Probably. No, this is this is this is it. No, this is the show. Of, all right, is, all right. Yeah. What are, what are we doing here? I love that. <laughs> okay, so then, it, it, yeah, his girlfriend like catches fire, um, <laughs> and then he does an after Yang, where he uh, takes her to a repair shop. I don't know if either of you guys watched After Yang. Uh-uh. No. Uh No. It was a really good movie. I think it was two years ago. Maybe it's last year. Um starred uh colin farrell and uh what the hell's her name she was married to joshua jackson uh eric oh i should know but I... yeah uh slipped my mind uh a- anyway they have uh they have an android who is like their child that they bought to be a friend to their actual child um and it like malfunctions and dies and there's a robot repair thing. It was a really good movie. I highly recommend it. I think um, you recommended yeah. it on the show at some point. Yeah. Yeah. I think I'm pretty sure I did. Uh, anyway, uh, there's a robot repair shop and the robot is like a member of the family, much as cherry is to Treadwell. Yeah. Yes. Very <laughs> um, important part of his life. Yes. He's obsessed with her. <laughs> yeah. Um, so it's it, romance. It's it, more than that. It's romance. Yeah, he loves it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so the guy he takes her to can't fix her. Can't fix her at all. Um, and tries to sell him a new model, uh, including fucking Robbie the robot. And uh, what was the robot from uh, the day the earth stood still? Oh, uh, I can't remember. Because yeah. it was in that scene. <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, I know. I feel like that's that. Robot is just hanging out and around Hollywood sets. That you can throw him in a movie whenever you want. Yeah. Um, uh, it, tur- it turns out that he can't repair her, um, and they're really hard to come by, this Cherry 2000 model. Um, in fact, her memory disc is worth a lot of money. Yes. If you wanted to sell it. And yeah, it's, it's one of those weird things where she seems outdated. Yeah. By, like, there's newer models, but, like, they're all, like, they don't make them, like, Cherry the 2000 yeah, model. Yeah, like. uh, he's got some line, like, Back when Detroit really cared. Yeah, oh. and like you, we could say how that doesn't make sense, but yet like we live in a tech Automobiles. world where that makes perfect sense. Yeah. Think about yeah, yeah, how yeah. great Uber was in the beginning or right. you know, Netflix. Like, think about how awesome Netflix was when it started and now how right. shitty it is. They don't build Netflix like they used to, kid. Yeah, right. That's true. You and they me, don't. we're the same. We're romantics. Or like, you yeah. don't know what a video iPod 
you know, from <laughs> circa, you know, 2004. Remember Nokia phones? Those things <laughs> still still running if you had one. They don't build phones like that no more. I mean, shit, my bat. Like, if I still had one, the battery might be charged. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like <laughs> The mafia burners that are in the East River in New York would turn on if you dredged them up, yeah. you know? Yeah. <laughs> so... Yeah, uh, it turns out, turns out uh, they're not hard to come by. And then there's a later scene with him where we get the motivation to go into the wasteland. Apparently, there's some warehouse out in the fucking middle of nowhere full of ancient robots. Mm-hmm. Um, but right now, Sam is just trying to move on with his life. So he goes to work in a recycling center. Recycling's a big deal. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, uh, where their uh, unemployment is now down to 40%, according to the news. <laughs> Um, toaster ovens are brought Biden's up America. repeatedly. This is where I started to go, okay, you're trying to say something, I think. Yeah. Like, it was like, okay, I, I, I'm going to start paying a little more attention because yeah. I feel like there's some commentary happening here. This is good. Yeah, uh, and oddly enough, toaster ovens are a bit of a focus in this film. <laughs> it's weird. Um, they are also, they come up repeatedly in the Fallout TV series. <laughs> like, it weird. makes me, it, having never played a fallout game i don't know but i do i did kind of wonder like oh i wonder if fallout has some like cherry 2000 references in it it's a good question i'm sure yeah because i've only played is, very briefly i've not played that deep into it to know for sure i mean this is the type of stupid fucking movie mm-hmm. that people who make video games love to make references to <laughs> yeah it, it harkens it, it reminded me of, like a lot of, with um a boy and his dog right? oh yeah yeah, and and that is that's huge. Like that's like the reference of Fallout. Mm. They 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 basically made this game to be like half the trailers have the the protagonist walking with a dog next yeah. to them mm-hmm. for that reason. Yeah. But yeah, I get those vibes for sure. And the toaster oven, it's true. Six Finger Jack gives like a whole sales uh-huh. pitch on one. He has a wall of them. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it's like are these like are these survivalist? Is it like a survivalist? Thing? I, like, uh, I couldn't tell you. Yeah. I mean, if if all you've got's like limited power, like a generator, you're definitely going to perf- want a toaster oven, yeah, over yeah. a microwave or a, a standard oven. I would right. Think. They still pull yeah. a lot of wattage, though. They do. Yeah. Anyway, uh, moving on from <laughs> toaster ovens, which I mean, it's my fault. I led us down that path. <laughs> <laughs> it's a theme, though. You're right. <laughs> so um, the upper half of Kuatu, um <laughs> and this other guy. Uh, want him to go out to the Clue Clue Club. <laughs> oh, that's close. Oh, uh, yeah. That uh-huh. was, yeah. <laughs> Yikes. It's close to yeah. being bad. You're right, Wait. though. That is the upper half of Quato from... Yes. From, <laughs> from Total Recall. It's the same actor. I saw him and like, Quato! Yeah. 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 <laughs> There's a lot of those moments. It's yeah. awesome. Um, and he's doing, like, it, him, and, him and his other co-worker are doing this, like, 40s fucking like rat-a-tat-tat comedy dialogue through the whole thing. It is very weird. Mm-hmm. It's like the whole their audition is very weird. It's like they're yeah. auditioning for the HUD sucker proxy. <laughs> um, yeah, long live the HUD. Uh, but anyway, uh, yeah, they go to the Clue Clue Club, which is like a sex club, except it involves signing a lot of uh, legal paperwork. Mm-hmm. And I noticed that the name uh, is very similar to Club JJ in Split Second, which we just watched days ago. Oh. Clue Clue versus JJ. Yeah, spoiler alert, that's going to be uh, next week's episode. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I felt like, like, like Ben said, I felt like they were trying to say something about this society. Like, uh, mm-hmm. do women, is, is there a shortage of I, women for men? Or, or do women, like, have power I over guess. them? Is that yeah. why they resort to robots? I the first time I watched it, I was think I was thinking, oh, okay, so we're just doing like some late eighties terrible fucking jokes about how like, oh, ladies, you gotta sign a contract if you want to get laid anymore. Yeah, I and thought it was which, like horrible objectification at first until I yeah. realized it was satire eventually. Yeah, um, and uh, a very cool lawyer in this club is Lawrence Fishburne, um, cool. and he has some fucking Dwayne Wade looking glasses. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Says full penetration, which is fun. <laughs> he does. <laughs> yeah. Um, maybe we should clip that for the that uh, sold intro. The script uh, to him. Yeah. That um, might be what I have to. I don't know. There's so many good things to clip. Yeah. Um, and it turned out like, I don't know. He's Treadwell's just not into it. He just wants his cherry back. Mm-hmm. Um, 
But you get that sense. Yeah, like you said, Eric, like it's like this is where I start to go. You're, you're like, oh, because this just could be gross. And then you're like, well, wait a minute. Like it's like men, they're like, you can see that someone like Treadwell is exhausted with the having to go through this rigmarole to get companionship. So he just wants his cherry back. And, and real women have all the power. Well, yeah. They have the they, lawyer. litigated. Yeah. <laughs> There's yeah. a whole lot of red tape to get through. Yeah, um, it is weird. Like, it's not... It's, it's not movie, woke. We're not going to go that far. <laughs> this movie is definitely trying to say something. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, it's like, I don't, I don't think it's quite coherent about it. Nope. Um, Especially and, at this point in the movie. Yeah. And oh yeah, definitely not at all. And, and it is know. a product of its time. It's still, a, yeah. it's still an eighties movie. Yeah, yeah. There's still some boobs. You're still going to have Melanie Griffith in silhouette, changing her shirt in front of her mm-hmm. client for no reason. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, well, you see that just shows how little she cares, yeah, man. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so, Basically, uh, he leaves and ends up meeting with the robot guy. Uh, the robot guy says, uh, go to, uh, I don't remember what town it was, and uh, hook up with this tracker, Johnson. Um, and he'll and they'll be able to take you to a uh, salvage yard in the wastelands and get a new cherry. So he hops in a car and drives. That's some good <laughs> fixer work by the street dock. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, yep. And he goes to a Wild West hotel called the Glory Hole. <laughs> and he dresses for the part, too. Like, he's got yeah. his tack vest on, and he's got his shotgun. Mm-hmm. Not just not just a shotgun. <laughs> he is carrying a fucking World War I-era goddamn trench broom, complete with, <laughs> complete with heat shield on the barrel and bayonet lug. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, it is, it stuck out to me like a sore thumb, like, well, yeah. that is, that is clearly a choice somebody made. He's ready <laughs> to I find that sex bot. Yeah. yeah. He wants and his I cherry back. explain it. <laughs> <laughs> That's a cherry 2000, man. He's got to, he's got to get his fucking piece. Mm-hmm. They don't make them like that anymore. Josh, <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> so when, did, when Detroit cared. <laughs> <laughs> I love the idea of Detroit pivoting from the automobile industry to the sex bot industry. Yeah, yeah. You can see it happen, really honestly. doing it well. Really doing it well. Yeah, they put a lot of love and care at the beginning. There's a lot of cool lines like that, like the Florida Wars. Someone yeah. mentions the Florida <laughs> yeah. Wars later, and I'm like, this is amazing. I do want more of this world. I'm not, I will not uh, lie yeah, about that. It, it is like, so much of this movie is just around the edges, deeply weird and fun bullshit. Uh-huh. Yeah. You're just like, what in the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> I mean, great answer to whatever that question was, but <laughs> what the fuck is this doing? Right. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, so he goes to this crazy Wild West hotel called the Glory Hole. Um finds out that uh, he is not allowed to bring bots in after 11, but they have a bunch of rentals. Um you know, so you'll be fine anyway. And you can get your nut on. Don't worry, yeah, buddy. Yeah. Uh, they got <laughs> Marilyn, John's, and I don't remember what the other one was. Um, am, I, am I crazy? Were they eating? Was there st- food being served through holes? <laughs> Maybe I dreamed that up after I watched it. I mean, they, you're saying uh, that. I'm like, that could have been happening. I that don't could have been happening. remembering I it, but I would yeah. not be surprised at all. Exactly. I think uh, I, was, I think I saw it happen. And I was like, "This is amazing." The the desk the desk clerk lady was feeding a cat in a uh, five gallon water bottle. Oh right, <laughs> That's right. It was in the bottle. She was like chopsticking food down to it. Jesus yeah. Christ, that was real <laughs> weird. Um, this movie is odd. Uh, also, you see a guy with a terrifying face. Yeah, dude. What's um, up with that guy? Who notices? When David asks the lady behind the counter, you got any cherry 2000s? Yeah, he gives a noticeable eyebrow raise. Yeah. Um, Mm -hmm. He has a a face. I mean, there is a structure to that. Is it, was it plastic surgery? I I thought it was a mask. I thought it was like. It it looked like prosthetics. prosthetics. um, I think it's that dude's face. Um, Oh, no. Look him up. Uh, the character's name was Chet. I can't remember what the actor's name is because I looked him up because I was like, what the fuck is oh, going shit, on that here? That is his face. Robert Zadar. Yes. Oh, um, my Lord. Look at his wow. IMDb now. Yeah. That's his face. Yeah. Whoa. It's. Does he show up later? Yes, he is. He does. Uh, he's yeah. in he, Lester's. He looks less 
He's yeah. less shocking. It's because they put a hat on him. Yeah, maybe. But it's, there was like a gloss to his face in the in that first scene. Yeah, it's. Uh... Am, I, am I wrong? It felt like the the um, what I known as Big Brown Beaver music video where they have yeah, those like, prosthetic I, yeah. masks on. Nope, that's that's just that dude's head. Well, and... now I feel terrible. But... All right, well, he... brief stint as a Chippendales dancer. Well, Big brawny and imposing with an enormous face, gigantic jaw, and massive muscular <laughs> physique, the hulking 6'2 Zadar projected a strong, aggressive, and intimidating screen presence. Sure. Oh, wow. I guess oh, that's just his face. Just the nail stage. Yeah. Wow. Oh, he, he was in Beastmaster 2, Samurai Cop, um, a gnome named Gnorm. Passed at 64 on March 2015. Tango and Cash. Hey. You, you want to know what his character name in Tango and Cash was? Hmm. Face. <laughs> well, that oh. is appropriate. It looks fake, man. It really does. Wow. Uh, anyway, we don't it need worked to... for him. Yeah. Uh, hey, you can make a career out of it, man. Yeah. Um. So yeah. Uh, ignore. You know. Forget that he happened for the next forty-five minutes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so he. Uh, so Treadwell uh, goes to the office of E. Uh, e. Edwards Tracker. Um or E. Johnson Tracker, and uh, it's Melanie Griffith, and her name is E. Um, She's sporting some kind of haircut. She Mm -hmm. has a haircut. Um, Apparently this is like, she had given birth like, I think a month before this movie started. To Dakota? Really? Uh, Maybe. I don't don't know. Damn. Uh, I don't know how old Dakota uh, Johnson is. Uh, uh, seems maybe. like it'd be right if she'd given yeah. birth, unless she had a bunch of yeah, I guess babies I'd... right around that time because she's yeah. about that age. Also, this year, uh, she was Oscar nominated. Just keep that in mind. She was Oscar nominated the same year that this movie comes out. <laughs> wow, I didn't know that was this year. It's, it's, she is by far the weakest link of this movie. I mean, not, and that's saying a lot. Yeah. I, I, the thing I is, I, I don't dislike her performance. Um, I mean, I don't, it's not great, but I don't. She's, she's got this like really squeaky, childish she, she voice. She soft definitely voice. Yeah, she's supposed to be this hard ass, but she's got this very yeah, like very innocent, soft. All of her lines, she's like kind of phoning in. It feels like. Yeah, See, it, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know that it's uh, innocent. I uh, there's a lot of there's definitely a lot of sexy baby voice. Yes. Yeah. Um, which is a choice. Yeah. I, I, I don't hair. know, man. It's a, I don't think I've seen enough of her to know what her normal voice is, but she's, she's kind of like that. Um, I feel like she auditioned for cherry and she got just, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, like, well, <laughs> I feel like it was like just a miscast. Like I know she's a good actress. Yeah. I just yeah, don't know same. if this was the role for her. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, she, I, she, oh, well, like, we'll get there. But again, by the end, she starts to sell it. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, and if she just had a fucking kid like a month before, so you know maybe she's just paying some bills. I don't know. So. Dream casting for E in 1988. Uh, let's see. Uh, Linda Hamilton, I'd buy it. Sure. Um, Uma Thurman. Yeah. Oh. How old was yeah. she? Which she's pretty young in '88. Right? Oh yeah, yeah. She she'd be like twenty. She could do it. Something like that. Um, yeah. Little yeah. Hamilton, Hamilton shoe in. Yeah, uh, like, obviously. Right. Yeah, sure. I mean, I don't, I don't know that I want her to do that because it yeah. feels like ripping it off. I know but. she's, <laughs> yeah, typecasting her as, as. But I mean, you could have gotten the who was the who was the, uh, the dance the snake dancer from um, Blade Runner the rebel. Uh, I don't remember her name, uh, the actress's name, but I feel Zora. Like she had Zora, an edge. Yeah. She could have yeah. done it. I mean, they're basically yeah. pulling from Blade Runner cast <laughs> yeah. anyway. So just like. Point. Yeah, um, they Daryl Hannah. Pretty, Daryl, Daryl Hannah, Hannah. Yeah. absolutely. Daryl Hannah would have been. She yeah. was. That's a dude. She's. I that feel like yeah. she was trying to be Daryl Hannah. Melanie Griffith was trying to be Daryl Hannah. Yeah. yeah, you're absolutely right. Okay, all right, we fixed this movie. So they got the hair, and then she was kind of doing the performance even a little bit. Definitely Ooh. doing the performance and the hair. Yeah, yeah. I think okay. that's nailed it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> this result. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Joanna, um, Joanna Cassidy played Sora, by the way. Ah, yeah, okay. Uh, okay. Um, yeah, anyway, back to Dakota Johnson. Um, so just to bring us up to the Dakota future. Dakota Johnson? Yeah, uh, Dakota Johnson's mom um, died in the Amazon while researching spiders. R.I.P. Melanie Griffith. 
I, I don't get that reference. Did you miss oh. that bit of internet? I missed it. Uh, yeah. Okay, uh, Dakota Johnson was the star of a little film called Madame Web that came out like a month ago <laughs> yeah. and was a complete train wreck. Right. It is theoretically a Spider-Man film. I'm on no board. Speedersman. No. Okay. Um, and there was a line in the trailer that came out like two months ago. It's a terrible voiceover line where she says something along the lines of, he was working in my in the Amazon with my mother researching spiders when she died. Okay. It it was a whole thing for like two weeks. Oh. I believe you. That whole movie was a thing for like two weeks. It really got milked. It was a it was a slow meme month. <laughs> it, yeah, uh, it really was. And it it they weren't as successful in turning it into a thing thing as they were with Morbius and Morbin Time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, Melanie Griffith uh, is not dead, as far as no, I know. No, she is not. Uh, yeah, she lives. <laughs> not unalive. I, I'm not sure. Is she still married to Antonio Banderas? How the fuck would I know? Well, I, 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 ex- I expect you to know things. I'll I mean, look at her IMDb page. Uh, no, they divorced in 2015. Oh. Uh, probably as a result of Zadar dying. <laughs> <laughs> God damn. <laughs> Man, oh man. Uh, Sigourney those... Weaver could have done this role too, by the way. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Whoa, yeah. she was married to Don Johnson twice? And oh. fucking, um, damn, what's her? I can't, I, I'm, this is why I shouldn't do these shows because I can't shit. remember any name ever. Oh, th- we do that every week. Don't yeah. Worry. Okay. Don't okay. Worry. Uh, fucking Halloween. Uh, oh, I was just trying to remember her name earlier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Jody. Uh, or, or not um, Jody. Sorry. Oh, not Jody. Uh, J- uh, Jamie, Jamie Lee Curtis. Curtis. Jamie yeah. Lee Curtis. I just, Could have maybe even pulled this off. Definitely. Okay. Uh, I, I just want to really quick run down Melanie Griffith's, Mar- Griffith's? Melanie Griffith's uh, marriage history. Okay. Oh, okay. Married to John Johnson, January when? 8, 1976. Total- this dude was trying to totally do a Don Johnson and was not pulling yes. it off. Yes, absolutely, absolutely true. Yeah. Sorry, continue. Okay, divorced from Don Johnson, July 1976. Oh, wow. Ooh, before he became Don Johnson. Wait for First it. of all, another boy and his dog situation yeah. going yeah, on. Yeah, that's true. Um, then in September 1981 to 1989, she was married to uh, and then divorced. Rico Tubbs. Stephen Bauer. <laughs> um, Stephen Bauer. Yes, Stephen oh. Bauer. Uh, he was Don Eladio on Better Call Saul and uh, Breaking Bad. Um, he has been in tons of shit. You have absolutely seen him in tons of stuff. Okay, um, I don't believe you. Yeah. Uh, and let's see. Then June 26, 1989 to January 96, married to Don Johnson again. Hey. So that's when Dakota was born. Yeah, must be. Um, and then May 1996 to December 2015, Antonio Banderas. Oh. oh. And 2015 to present, nobody, I guess. Nobody, as far as She's I'm aware. She's a single yeah. lady. I thought those kids had a chance, too. Yeah. Yeah. Man, oh, man. I didn't even, I didn't even think of Don Johnson being in you know, a boy and his dog. Yeah, you're good call. <laughs> nice. She was like, okay, I can yeah. do one of those. Let's do that. Let's I just do think this. it's fucking wild that they were married for like six months and then 15 years later, get back together. I feel like they could yeah. make a movie about that. Seems like they could. <laughs> they should merge. I mean, they could be in the same world. Boy and his dog and Cherry 2000. Yeah. Honestly. I don't think I've seen a boy and his dog. It's, it is cool. Okay. It's weird. It's like this. It's similar budget, but they were smarter with it. Mm-hmm. Um, and withheld a lot of the crazy flash you try, you see they yeah. try to do in this one. They so, spent less of it on uh, fucking gasoline tanks to simulate <laughs> rocket launchers. And, and yeah, and yeah. RPGs. Yeah. Yeah. But it's weird. It's like a post-apocalyptic world. Nuclear radiation has fucked everything up. And a dog, he has a dog that can talk to him like telepathically. Mm-hmm. So oh, it's his sweet. buddy. And he just like works. He's they come become like best friends, and but the dog's like a you know got a sharp wit, and they're just like it's a buddy movie. But so it's Turner and Hooch post apocalyptic sort of, version. You guys should check that. Sure. I mean, it's not cyberpunk. It's not cyberpunk, but it's um, it's good. It's, if it's got close. A we we don't commentary. have to. 
We don't well, have. I, I would argue that this movie isn't cyberpunk. Yeah, this movie isn't really cyberpunk. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there are sex bots. And there are robots uh, and there's you know, dystopia. Well, there's yeah, a yeah. street dock and there's yeah. fixers. And, sure. Yeah, no, I, I realized that too since we watched it. I was like, oh, oh this is not really. Lucky. No, dude. Last week we did the girl with the dragon tattoo. So don't worry. Okay, we're not. Okay. We're not yeah. speaking cool. to any strict. <laughs> any strict. We, in fact, we're, we pride ourselves on the show not gatekeeping cyberpunk. We like to. We have more I of mean, like a spectrum. There was technically high tech and low life. Yeah. In oh, in this movie, definitely. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Um, yeah, that's very interesting. Yeah. Okay. So he goes to Melanie Griffith's office. Um, she uh, beats him up for a minute. <laughs> um, and then he tries to hire her. And she says, okay, great. Let's go. And then he's like, no, I'm scared. I'm not going to the wasteland. <laughs> and yeah. she's like, okay, fuck off then. And he's like, I'll find somebody else. So he goes to a bar, which is a very Wild West bar. Um, it's called The Sinker. He orders 151 rum at the bar. I loved it. It's like, let's mm-hmm. order the most undrinkable liquid known to man. Yeah. And also, a donut. Yeah. <laughs> and a crawler or whatever. Yeah, a crawler. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing they goes with battery donut. acid like a crawler. <laughs> also, like. There's nicely. Also, when when I heard that the first time watching the movie that he was running 151, I immediately thought of again, Kansas City centric Tech Nine. Yeah, um, he's a third of the way to a Caribou Lou, 151 <laughs> Malibu rum and pineapple juice. <laughs> I love that, <laughs> which is undrinkable. Yeah, but... Anything with 151 is undrinkable. <laughs> mm-hmm. But I was just thinking like. Fucking just Kansas City all over this episode. Uh, ben is also in the Kansas City area. I am. We're the trifecta right now, of Kansas <laughs> yeah. City, with the writer of this thing. It's a, yeah. it's a quad to fact going. Yeah. I I used to drink uh, flaming Dr. Pepper shots with sure. 51. Sure. And I had a friend that kept lighting his hand on fire all night. Yeah. He got hammered on them. And it was, that's a fun time. Yeah. yeah, we'd always have get to a certain point. And you're like, let's let's do 151 shots. And then uh-huh. like, yeah, it's always a up. great idea. Yeah, um, never it's never gone. On fire. It's never once gone wrong. <laughs> Tim Treadwell. Oh, yeah, definitely not f- fire spreading across your fucking yeah. countertop because, yeah, <laughs> multiple times. Reaching the snake aquarium before it gets put out. <laughs> <laughs> Sam Treadwell knocks it back like a pro. Yeah, he, yeah does. he does. With that crawler. <laughs> well, when you got a Let crawler the, chaser. Yeah, yeah. exactly. It, <laughs> all the dudes eating donuts that bar. <laughs> It reminds me. So, uh, who was it? Was it Christian? So, from, on my podcast, mm-hmm. Chris, he's from Maine, and I want to ask. I want. I'm trying to figure out if this is Maine or if it's Canada. But apparently, in the strip clubs in one of those two oh, places, yeah. they have donuts. Yeah, that's a thing. It's that's like a, a Montreal thing. thing. Montreal. That's yeah. what it is. Yeah, it is. Or m- maybe it's all of Quebec, but Montreal definitely. Wow. It does not sound. I don't get it. But, but apparently they're it. good donuts too. Like yeah. they're not like shit donuts. It's like you go there for the donuts too. There's like yeah. a draw. Yeah, it is a hundred percent a thing. Mm. So that's normal and fine. Gotcha. Maybe that's why they did it here. A little yeah. slice of life in Cherry Two Thousand. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay, so he gets this drink and then he's uh, he's talking to some people and holy shit, there's Brian James. Um, who is, of course, Leon from Blade Runner. He was also in fucking Nemesis. He's also in like 9,000 other movies. Yeah. In this, he is dressed up like a um, fairly flamboyant cowboy. He also has a fucking Coke nail. Yeah. <laughs> um, eyeliner. A, a very fancy ring eyeliner. It is a very weird performance. Um, <laughs> kind of like his nemesis performance he's he, he is killing it in his like literally one and a half scenes in this film mm-hmm. yeah man i kept expecting him to come back like he was I, tracking him the whole time was i kind was of really to get... hoping he would apparently uh i found this out reading something uh he and tim thomerson were like met each other in the fucking national guard in like the 1960s oh, wow. so they oh. were just like buddies that's cool. Which kind of explains why they're in a bunch of movies together. Yeah. Um, and had two of the strongest performances in this movie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so he basically says like, oh, yeah, I can take you out of the wasteland. I, I know. And I can get you out there. Uh, here's the thing. I want to, you know, we need to hook up with this uh, six finger Jake. He's the best tracker there ever was. And he's not dead like people will tell you. 
come on out here with me. And he like says just all sorts of weird shit. Like Treadwell's like, I'm looking for a cherry 2000. And Brian James is like, va, va, voo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, and don't worry about my, my suspicious companion here. He can't hear. Any he's death. deaf. <laughs> yeah. He's deaf. <laughs> the guy's like eating a donut. And then it's like, uh, I was kidding. He can, or what do you say? It like, does lead to my lips. possibly favorite joke. Well, yeah. one of my favorite jokes in the show when, when they're holding, uh, Sam Treadwell captive, uh, Leon has his gun on him. And then the deaf guy behind him, like in a headlock and the guy was, I thought he was deaf. And the guy, the guy says, I can read lips, which is funny because he was behind him. I don't know. It was funny to me. Yeah. yeah it's <laughs> it's uh, staring at his donut the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it is very funny. Uh, also, uh, leading leading Treadwell out through the alley, uh, Brian James says, you know, Zone 7 is a tough place. You should see the way they carry on out there. People staying up all night, playing Twister, revert to their animal natures. <laughs> <laughs> playing Twister. It's, it's just wild. Um, and then in like, the, basically the whole thing is they're going to mug him and take the... Uh, take the memory chip for the cherry 2000 because quote Lester's going to want that, mm-hmm. um, which is our first mention of Lester. And, uh, in that same scene, uh, he calls Earl a chicken head. Yes. Which, that's what I was going to point out. Yeah, yeah. Which is a, uh, do androids dream of electric sheep reference? I, um, like it could be coincidence, but it seemed like a direct homage to, to Dade's. So. Mm-hmm. Um, is that in the Blade Runner movie at all? Do they use that word? Uh, no, I they don't do not. think so. I don't either. Uh, at least, well, uh, it's possible it got used in the original cut, but I haven't seen that for 25 years. So 30 it's definitely years. used frequently in the mm-hmm. book. So. Right. Yeah. So that was, uh, that was fun and weird. Yeah. Um, so uh, then there's a, a dumb confrontation. He gets away from them and uh, decides, okay, I will go with Melanie Griffith. And she's because I got to get out of here. <laughs> Yeah, uh, but loses guys. his sweet shotgun. Yeah, yeah. that was a tragedy. It was yeah. just like, oh man. Uh, got but uh, she drives a uh, 1960, a red 1965 Mustang with fucking Yokohama dune buggy tires. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it looks badass. I'm not gonna it, lie. It looks very cool. It also looks like, oh, that is an undrivable vehicle. Like literally, you can't turn the <laughs> wheel more yeah. than five degrees without those tires rubbing something very important. And they put it right. put it through the shit in this <laughs> they movie. They really do. <laughs> they also the 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 transition or the transmission like the stick shift apparently <laughs> sets it into Plaid yeah. speed, <laughs> fucking interstellar <laughs> overdrive. Yeah, yeah. Plaid speed. <laughs> it was just like weird how she was just pulling knobs like, and shit. She still got pedals, but she has to adjust the speed with the e brake. It looks like it's, yes, she yeah. she adjusts the speed with a throttle that is in the place of an e brake, operating mm-hmm. exactly the opposite how you would want an e brake, <laughs> right. or uh, exactly the opposite of how you would want a throttle to react. <laughs> like you, you crank it up and then it like blasts off what a great car i love it yeah it was awesome it's like it was one of those moments there's a few of these moments where you're just like these guys are trying to well, this is fun dumb bullshit yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah they're trying to amp this up but they clearly don't really know how but uh-huh. I'm, I'm 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 along okay yeah i get it it goes fast <laughs> we've we've talked about this before and we're going to talk about it on our upcoming uh next week's episode but there's something in these movies, like we've watched Some bad movies. movies. Yeah, well, yeah, that's what I mean. Mm-hmm. We've watched bad movies like Cyborg was very bad. Cyber uh, Vengeance. <laughs> Cyber Vengeance. Even Cyber Vengeance wasn't it, as it bad. It had a little bit. But, but yeah. there's there's this self-awareness where they take themselves seriously. They're telling a serious story, but not too seriously. They know what they are. Mm-hmm. And there's, there's so much value in that. And it allows the watcher to... Be like, okay, I don't have to take this serious. I can have fun with this. Right. Yeah. And you feel like an asshole pointing it out. Yeah, exactly. You know, like, because it's like, yeah, we get it, dude. And next week's <laughs> yeah. movie, I would say, does that even more because this movie almost feels like a comedy, like they're leaning yeah, into it. I think a little it's bit more. written, I think it's really written as a comedy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, it, it's not executed as well as maybe it should have. Yeah. Been. Yeah. But you're, you're right. Like the, the script is definitely. It's satire. I mean, unless they just fucking hired a bunch of hilarious people and said, fucking go nuts. 
I yeah. mean, like, I mean, maybe Tim Thomerson is the comedic genius of our times. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's it's definitely weird. And it's kind of uh, they did a lot in the 80s. I feel like mm-hmm. it's 80s movies just have a different vibe about them. Yeah. Well, I was just going to say it's like I could see if it weren't for the hands of, you know, Ivan Reitman or whatever, I could see Ghostbusters easily going this route. Oh, yeah. yeah. If it didn't get the budget it had. It's yeah. a fucking weird movie. It doesn't, you know. You're right, dude. You're absolutely right. Yeah. If with, not for the director, Ghostbusters would have looked like this. Yeah. yeah. It would have had these scenes. It would have been done. There would have been directionless, pointless moments that didn't necessarily add up to anything. Arguably, just, Ghostbusters is full of that anyway. They well, just yeah. happen to be really great and they have directionless, an pointless scenes. They have an incredible cast yes. where this is a really bad uh, uh, cast. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, and, and it all it all is, you're right, like, they, they have those pointless scenes, but it kind of, that's the point of it. Yeah. Whereas this almost tries to make it seem like these things matter yeah. when they don't. Yeah, I don't know. It's it's yeah. Anyway, it's but it's interesting. We can't Old forget. Love and care. We can't forget that Ghostbusters is the most important text of the late twentieth century, and it must be revered yes. and treated with reverent care by all people. It is the Bible. I, of, oh God, man. I'm amongst kins. So tired. My kinship here. I I so. my film school. They were they they were so disdainful of me because I was like my favorite film is Ghostbusters of all it's favorite, it, favorite goes, it was my favorite too but I really feel like recently it's been I I love Ghostbusters to death I do not have any reverence for it because it's a very good and funny movie with Dan Aykroyd getting sucked off by a ghost <laughs> it is not a it does not deserve the reverence that they seem to be trying to give it in the new With movies, the new movies, yeah, the new movies are Just, what it make me so sad. Like, oh, those, yeah, those fucking like, really, we're gonna CGI Harold Ramis giving oh, a it's nod, a complete, and oh man, I could go off. A, it, I, it's a whole, it's a misunderstanding if you ask me. Is it's like I get yeah. it, dude. I was a kid. I watched Ghostbusters. I wanted to be a Ghostbuster. I loved it. Right. It was my first but, adult movie. I think. Yeah. Yeah, and it's like two different movies. When you grow up as a kid watching Ghostbusters, you loved it because these guys aren't afraid of ghosts, and I am. And now I watch this, and I'm empowered. But then you get older, and you're like, "Oh, there's and a whole that other man movie. has no dick." <laughs> yes, <laughs> yeah. you know, there's jokes you didn't get as a kid, and yeah. then you get older, and you're like, "Oh my god, he's getting sucked." I thought Dan Aykroyd crossed his eyes because his underwear showed, and he was embarrassed. Yeah, <laughs> I get older, I realize, oh, he's getting his dick sucked. Such by an a ghost. innocent, such an innocent yeah. time, but. Uh, I, when I, I did, you know, I remember when I was, you know, studying filmmaking and stuff, like I wanted to make a Ghostbusters movie. And then one day, I think it was actually Chris, my friend, he was like, don't ever do that. He's yeah. like, that's a fan film. That's not a real film. Mm-hmm. And I, although evolution, I if you've ever seen that got pretty darn movie. close. <laughs> that's a great movie. Yeah. yeah. But I, I, that's how I feel these sequels are with Ghostbusters. It's like these, this guy's like. I want to write a movie about my experience loving Ghostbusters as a kid. I'm going to write this movie about kids that discover yeah. the Ghostbusters stuff and become Ghostbusters. I'm like, you're missing the entire fucking point. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, sorry, I, get, I get passionate about it. But no, I, I feel the same way and I kind of feel bad because some people I know enjoy that, but yeah. my only reaction after I watched the, was it afterlife? Yeah. Yep. Uh, I texted Eric and said, Boston made me feel bad. <laughs> <laughs> because That's the tagline yes i just felt it just felt like so ebert. sad roger ebert over here <laughs> just like <laughs> it was just like it really convinced me like oh wait so and this is a weird thing for me to say being somebody who is at this point now hosted uh uh-huh. you know uh nine years worth of podcast about defunct media mm-hmm. um Nostalgia is poison. Yeah. Uh, and yes. it's the same thing. It's the same way I felt about uh, fucking uh, Ready Player One, where I'm just yeah. like, yep, yeah, I, yeah, okay, you, you know what an Atari is. All right. That's, yeah, yeah. That doesn't count as a joke. Star just, Wars. And I mean, I, mean, I don't want to get into it, but Star yeah. Wars and Star yeah. Wars. all of it. It's feeding on nostalgia being your entire yeah i've I'd, i want it's to... ruining art honestly yeah. yeah it really is and it makes me like upset well it and to bring it to a dystopian 
pl- plays too. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's the big, these big companies that yeah. are so averse to risk that mm-hmm. it's, it's not about making a good movie. It's about cashing in on a built in audience that, you know, will just show up. Mm-hmm. And that's the most important thing is how do we grab that? You know, how, do, how can, can we kind of gauge how many people are going to freaking show up to the theater just because we, it's got Beverly Hills cop in the title yeah, or, you know, or whatever. I mean, that doesn't, that's not, I don't think that's going to theaters, but yeah, I think it's Netflix only, that, but yeah. That being said, uh, please cash in on cherry 2000 nostalgia and yes. It yes. yes. <laughs> like, see, All this, that to say, this is the thing. Like, uh, I wouldn't, I would never have an objection to somebody remaking this movie. Yeah. Cause I mean, there's like, no, there's no cultural nostalgia around. Yeah. This yeah movie. Like, cause no one's done it justice yet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, what, what people don't remember is that prior to 1941, there were three ver- three separate movies made of the Maltese Falcon. And really? the oh, thing wow. is, they were all bad. <laughs> but <laughs> they kept going like, no, I mean, I'm certain there's a good movie in here somewhere. Just that the one we did was bad. Yeah. Like, right. If you and nobody gave a shit that this is the, you know, this is the fourth Maltese Falcon movie in nine years because nobody cared about the just erased the others yeah 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 like that's a per this movie would be great to get remade like it is a poorly it's a fun concept poorly executed and that's fucking great do it it was a swing and a miss yeah a swing and a miss so hard that the legs twisted Uh, like bugs bunny it was a foul ball off the pole i mean (laughs) okay okay. (laughs) it was it was kind of an exciting foul that might might be a hit (laughs) Yeah, yeah doing sure. baseball analogies, but okay. Okay, so they're racing across the desert. Uh, no lights on. Um, she drives mostly by feel, she says. <laughs> Which is the craziest fucking thing I've ever heard. <laughs> sure. Yeah. That was a very uh, big trouble little China feel there. It's yeah. all the reflexes, you know. Oh, uh, <laughs> the check is in the mail. <laughs> yeah, check is in the mail. <laughs> yeah. Uh, she speaking of which. a sandwich. <laughs> she, I was uh, looking, um, just looking at some of the cast of this on the break. Pamela Gridley, Gid, sorry, Pamela Gidley, who plays mm-hmm. Cherry 2000, unfortunately passed in 2018, mm-hmm. was married to James Liu, oh. who's like a big stunt guy and was uh, involved in Big Trouble in Little China. So. Sweet. Oh. Wow. That's very cool. He's yeah. still working. He's in, he, he got an award for Luke Cage, apparently, or was nominated mm-hmm. or something. Very fancy. Anyway, it is, that is apropos of nothing and just wasting time. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so uh, then we got to go through this barricade, which is the border wall to the uh, wastelands. Um, and like I said earlier, uh, it's an incredibly uncompelling and unexciting action sequence. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. I don't know how they managed it. I seriously would love to see somebody who knows editing. I like, part of it was was also the acting uh, and the writing because um, E tells Mm -hmm. uh sam treadwell to put his helmet on and then Uh she acts like this is completely normal day at the office for her so she doesn't like like this is how she gets across the river yeah and to be sam doesn't look particularly afraid either yeah so who are we supposed to be we find out later that he's uh a veteran of the florida wars or something yes yeah Yes. So, which explains why just out of nowhere, he is uh, fucking nailing people from 150 yards with a Mac 10. Possibly mm-hmm. the only character in the movie that can shoot a bullet in the right yeah. direction. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's, uh, it's a really bad sequence, although it does end with the car on fire. Uh, and then they just drive with the car on fire for a while. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and they park for a nap. Um, and, uh, I don't know. There's all this talk. Like, there's a an irritating amount of talk about how how long it's going to take to get there and how long they can spend inside and like all this sequencing shit. Mm-hmm. And it really doesn't matter at all. No. Um, like, it's, it's like they're bit. telling you. It's like they're kind of mapping out the movie for you, and then they're immediately going to ignore that any of it yeah. was said. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, so she's taking a nap in the car, and he sees uh, they're you know just hanging around a big uh, open pit mine. Um, and, oh yeah, uh, it's also at this point that we, uh, we see Sam dicking around with what appears to be a garage door opener that contains Sherry's <laughs> memory disc. Um, and he just replays 
like her talking at him. It's yeah. very bizarre. His only <laughs> memories of Cherry are shit that happened in the first two minutes of the movie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that's her entire personality. Yeah. yeah. He's playing back on repeat. Yeah. So he but sees he some... hears, overhears him. Yeah. And rolls and, her eyes. Yeah. And there's also like some gross shit in there. Yeah. There's some <laughs> like, fucking that he recorded. memories are like, yeah, more. Uh, I like that. Lower. Yeah. <laughs> It's, it's, very it's pretty fucking funny, actually. Yeah. Um, yeah. So uh, he sees some shit going on across this open pit mine that they're parked by. And it's a guy getting like tortured and killed. Um, that part to me was where I was like, OK, that was pretty fucking sweet. Mm-hmm. Like that. That's where it like I think that was the first kill I felt in the movie. Well, I and- was like this poor bastard. They. You don't even know what the cause is because you can't hear them. They're across the yeah. canyon or the, the, the quarry, as you said. <laughs> a, 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 just a functioning rock quarry <laughs> yeah. that they shot near. But they, they stick this guy in a van and then they like push the pedal to the metal and they jump out and dr- like he's. They, it was a great cut. This is like the yeah. first time I saw the editing was like pretty good. Uh-huh. And they just, you just follow this truck screaming as this truck or this van flies down and it's just completely obliterated. They just killed it. Pretty brutal way to kill a guy. Pretty brutal. Yeah. And the thing that was most like the thing that kind of drew my attention to it most was that, okay, so you're, you know, at this point you're 35 minutes in the movie, something like that. So you're primed up for, okay, we got the, you know, there's going to be some wasteland King bullshit. Mm -hmm. It's They're obviously going to be fucking, Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome bondage gear bikers. Yeah, <laughs> that's what you're expecting. It's, yeah, it's, which you which you thought you'd seen already. Yeah, too, a few times you did at the barricade. <laughs> um, Two barricades, the dam. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but the main bad guys in this movie are like a '50s suburban dad club at a barbecue. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, they're like wearing little pork straw pork pie hats. And Hawaiian shirts, Hawaiian shirts, and calamine lotion on their bee stings. Yeah, and it's just a total. It like initially that was awesome. But like in the pushing the van off the cliff thing, you're like you're way back in like you know it's shot from 300 yards away, so you can't like really see what the fuck the guys are doing other than they're fucking with this guy and mm-hmm. what's up with these guys, and you're like these are not. These are not Lord Humongous and his it's, crazy biker man. It's kind of an right. awesome idea for like a shadow run or some post a rifts, some yeah, maybe some near future post apocalyptic gang where it's just a bunch of dads who like maybe they were mm-hmm. they had a D D group or a bowling league or something and they right. they form a gang to uh you know, survive. It's a pretty country great idea. Club. Yeah, country yeah. club dudes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's and it, that ca- like that single decision of no these aren't crazy weird fucking bondage bikers in leather these are <laughs> these are just dudes <laughs> yeah these are these are like repressed like optimistic weirdly domesticated suburban americans yep. it, yeah. that was where it it's, really to me i was like okay this movie's fucking actually pretty cool yeah it's such a magical and smart decision that m- elevates the movie like I don't yeah. know, way more than it should, yeah. like a full letter grade. Yeah, and their their camp isn't like some you know, barrels on fire. It's It looks like a little suburb almost. A little it's, oasis. Yeah. yeah, it's like a looks fun nice. little thing filled with geodesic domes. They, and have, like some, they have a pool. Some, some bullshit that a developer built out in the desert in 1955. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, a, like a test, like a little yeah. test neighborhood. Yeah. <laughs> a suburb. <laughs> but it's... It's this, it's that moment he gets like, right. He gets like, they get in this firefight. We meet, we meet six finger Jake. Mm -hmm. And, and then you, that's also, I wanted to go back there too, because that's where you start to see how innocent cherry is or not cherry, uh, but Johnson is. Yeah. It's, it's so hard to not ass. call her Cherry when she has bright red hair. Like that looks like a cherry. (laughs) Yeah. It's all over the cover of cherry 2000. It's so confusing. Yeah. But she's obviously this badass tracker. That obviously, you know, can squirt lemon in her eye and snort salt, and she's just a badass. But then you see, like, she's like asking Six Fingered Jake or whatever, Jack or whatever, 
like what the outside world is like. And she's very innocent around Sam because she's clearly got kind of a crush on him or she's jealous of Cherry. Yeah. You start to see like, oh, she's like, she hasn't like, she hasn't experienced anything other than her harsh, weird life. Yeah. Um, yeah, that was a cool moment. And then he gets like knocked out and he wakes up in this enclave. Of I, I feel like we death. skipped a lot though because we haven't even uh, done the, yeah, the dam. Uh, that yeah that was uh yeah oh was that before the dam yeah no, the that's dam. after the dam that's after the dam oh, oh okay sorry sorry yeah. sorry so yeah they leave the pit mine i was confused too yeah uh they leave the pit mine and then they're gonna go cross the river um and the way they cross the river is to get captured how are they captured um there's a crane with electromagnet on it that is going to pick up the car and drop it in the river like in a canyon, uh, you know, a thousand feet down or some shit. And he is so chill about this. And she's like, this yeah. is the easiest way to cross the river. Yeah. It makes no sense to me. It's like, you're getting Her, RPG shot at you. There has to be yeah, a better way. There are like 50 dudes with rocket propelled grenades um, <laughs> that are all shooting at them. Who, who uh, aren't expecting her. Yeah. Too. Like, it sounds like this is how she gets to where yeah. her buddy is all the time. So it's like this, it's on paper. It is an incredibly fun and stupid action scene in reality it just is very boring like yeah. I don't, it's it goes on too long and yeah not a single rpg comes near enough to them that you ever feel like they're in danger yeah it's yeah. very weird but anyway her plan goes it goes exactly to plan including fucking uh treadwell shooting the guy behind the crane and him leaning over on the uh uh controls the controls exactly at the right time to let them down at the exact into way to the right place height. yeah <laughs> into a spillway for this fucking dam uh, once again all of the shit is very cool like and by the way this is the second time the hoover dam has appeared on our show mm. um it was in universal soldier it was, as well. it was in universal soldier this is like one of a billion times las vegas will appear on the show what yeah. is it with post-apocalypse movies loving las vegas unclear like cheap to shoot probably maybe it's it they do it in fallout too in the video games yeah, mm -hmm. yeah uh it appears in an episode of the show yeah um yeah so uh then they do this f weird sequence where they go down a spillway and like i don't know it's, they get to do a water slide it's very it, yeah <laughs> yeah very yeah it's odd shit um and then we meet six finger jake um it turns out he is alive and he like raised um he raised e uh, and he's portrayed by Ben Johnson, who was a fucking cowboy actor for like a yeah. hundred years. Mm -hmm. I was looking at his IMDb. It's like oh. all 60s and Gun 70s smoke and cowboy shit. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like John Ford movies in the fucking late 30s. Um, yeah. he, he was in a, and also the guy who plays Snappy Tom was also in like 30 movies. They were both in like the same movie 20 times. Love that. They're probably friends. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they are. Um, he was also a super strong presence in this movie too. Yeah. Like he legit is almost like Obi Wan in Star Wars. Yeah, that's he why I thought Javier yeah. Bardem would play him in the Denis Villeneuve remake. I mean, <laughs> I, I would be fine with that, but I think he would, based on his performance in Dune Two, I really think he would kill the platitudes that Lester <laughs> keeps dropping. <laughs> the platitudes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so they get rescued by Snappy Tom. He serves him fucking rattlesnake out of a, a toaster oven. <laughs> He's got so many <laughs> toasters. Weird oven. speech. Or, yeah, he, he gives a really weird speech about dying. Um, yeah, it, it it felt AI generated. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was odd shit. Um, so anyway, they're they're gonna they get rescued, spend the night. Um, but uh, like Ben was saying, this is the part where um, uh, where E. It's the best acting by Melanie Griffith. Yeah, he gets some development. Uh, yeah, because yeah. she's been this badass, and now you see she's she's this soft, softer side that wants to, yeah. you know, fall in love. She's a romantic. She, she gets to act for a, for a, for a change. Yeah. in this movie, <laughs> and we also we also get a little bit of an argument about whether or not Cherry is just a robot. Mm -hmm. um, and. Uh, there's a lot more to love than hot wiring. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and oh, yeah. Also, uh, Six Finger Jake has a Wurlitzer in his uh, post apocalyptic bunker. Yeah. And it just movie. reminded me of how many movies did I see in like the latter half of the 1980s where 
somebody quote unquote cool's apartment had a fucking Wurlitzer jukebox <laughs> in it. Yeah. Like that was just a signal somehow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I agree. And it's gone now. <laughs> um, so, uh, they're going to, they're going to go try and get the Mustang back and escape. Um, and the plan goes bad immediately. Um, and Sam gets bunked on the head and captured. After he hides his uh, cherry disc in the yes. packs of one of the burros. 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 <laughs> That's true, yeah. Sorry, yeah, this is where yeah. I jumped way ahead to. But I, th- I get confused, you know, because there's so many checkpoints. Yeah. yeah. Like And like worthless checkpoints. Yeah, there's a lot of pointless through. action scenes. Yeah. Yeah. But um, yes, yeah, this was where things got interesting because he gets knocked out. And just like that. It's almost like a visual cue. Like you're almost like starting a new movie from this point. He like yeah. wakes up, it goes black, and and now it's like actually kind of directed pretty well. Yeah, yeah. I, you're right. This this is kind of where the movie gets good. It yeah. It, it takes a it takes a real serious left turn just out of fucking nowhere. He literally wakes up dressed in his Don Johnson outfit that I want. Um, yes. White pants, like hot pink button down shirt over a yep. t shirt. Uh, feathered hair. It, it's a great look. Like it's Sam a great Treadwell. look. And then the way the, the can just the direction of that wake up of him waking up and he's peering around and it's so weird. He's in this weird, like yeah. you said, like this fifties suburban. With yeah. A it's like, a, and, it's like a fucking dreamscape. It's like a dreamscape in a David Lynch movie. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's, it's very odd. And then suddenly out of fucking nowhere, uh, his ex-girlfriend, who now goes by the name Ginger, uh, uh-huh. shows up. She's um, great, by the way. I love she this She gives character. an incredibly weird and fun performance. She's so good in it. Like, she is just l- fucking totally into this shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, she's... Oh, yeah, she's in a beekeeper outfit. Don't worry about it. <laughs> oh, yeah. She was in Casino. The bees. <laughs> yeah. I forgot the bees were such an important part of this. Yeah, it's it's a wild thing like she's like oh yeah i'm out i'm living out here now um no as we got this cool community and like lester's the boss and he's like the big dude and i'm much um, happier out here than in the city yeah yeah it's a really weird thing because number one this character had never been alluded to existing yet, <laughs> prior yeah, yeah. to this second because i when i went back and watched it to take notes i was thinking like okay does he ever mention like does she come up at any point in right. the first half of the movie, because you'd think they would seed it like he, you know, some line about how he picked up Cherry after Elaine dumped him. Yeah, that's all they something. needed to do. Yeah. But no, there's nothing. She just nothing. appears out of nowhere and he's like, Elaine? And she's yeah. like, oh, I go by Cherry now. Ginger. <laughs> or Ginger, yeah. Gin- but once that, I mean, I felt that exact, I think everybody like wants to go re- rewind right away and be like, wait, did they fucking talk about her recently or something? Because he mm-hmm. acts like he did. But once the conversation fun. gets going, it's like, to me, the big change here too, just from a direction standpoint, it's like we finally feel like we can relate to Sam because he doesn't know what the fuck is going on. Yeah. He doesn't know where the yeah. fuck he is. He doesn't know what the fuck is this. And we're like all like, he's like, we're learning with him. And, and he doesn't like, only talk- fuck robots. This is a real woman that's from his past. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Like he's, he's getting a little character development finally. And then you're like, oh, okay. I, I don't, we, we don't know this woman, but he does. And he's still confused as fuck. And now I'm finally piecing this world together a little bit. It's, yeah. You know? Yeah. And the whole, like we get kind of a little walk through of the sky ranch and <laughs> everything is like completely sky cool ranch. and normal. Like, yeah. I, it's not the post-apocalypse at all here. <laughs> eight, eight ladies in matching bikinis next to the pool. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, and then we uh, Lester arrives with the Mustang in tow. Um, and it's mentioned that Sam was the only survivor of the attack or whatever. And Lester is the Tim Thomerson, like we've said before. Um, and he is incredibly funny. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like... This performance is deranged and a great time. Like, mm-hmm. uh, I this seeing this has made me a fan of this dude for life because he was like it, he was fine in Nemesis. Like he was L.A. police captain. Oh, I'm the bad guy, you know, in the third act. 
uh, totally fine. Uh, right. This this fucking pops. <laughs> He's well, like, yeah, yeah. If you're a fan for life, then we've got to watch him in his 2009 film, Samurai Priest, Vampire Hunter. Shit, yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, I will a, do so. It's a real I thing. I have faith in him now. <laughs> I, again, I saw him from uh, the John Candy. Terrible yeah, who's movie, Harry Crumb? Who's yeah. Harry Crumb? And he played kind of like a he's not he's kind of a bad guy, but kind of like a pretty boy preppy yeah. asshole. And and that's a comedy. And he was way funnier in this movie. Yeah, it's such a wild performance. Like he's he he's meeting he's meeting Sam for the first time, and he's like, "Do you work out?" Uh, you ought to. I mean, you know, you've got a really great build for it. And, you know, we really focus on like improving ourselves out here. And yeah. he's just those. It's like, this, so not this, your standard these, post-apocalyptic gang boss. Yeah. It's this weird motivational speaker, like very considerate. Yeah. <laughs> um, what do you say? It's, it's, it's more cult leader, honestly, than gang boss. Yeah. yeah I, you can yeah. kind of see how people fall for it because he's he's a tough guy, but he's also kind of kind of charismatic and fun. Yeah, it's right. Fucking- he's got a very strict way of a uh, code of how life should be run. And he's like got an iron fist about it, which is pretty awesome. At, at one point, actually, we saw um, uh, in the Hoover Dam scene, uh, there's some graffiti on a wall that uh, says, Lester says, be yourself. <laughs> <laughs> and this, like this is the thing his motivational speeches before every combat scene killed me oh yeah one of them, he says uh he says what does he say keep the sun out of your eyes and be yourselves yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah remember gentlemen life is an adventure, adventure. check the room first <laughs> be friendly but firm <laughs> randa you need to work on your personality yeah <laughs> no that was fucking awesome yeah, it is such a wild and hilarious performance. Like, I, uh, yeah, there's a reason this guy has been in the business for like 40 years nonstop, even though I had never seen him prior to, you know, Nemesis, I think was a first. year ago. Yeah, six yeah. months ago. I mean, I mean I, you've I, seen I, him. You just didn't yeah. remember his name because I'm yeah. looking at his credits and he's got 200 oh, yeah. plus movies under his name. It, it's it's the point of the movie where the where the flipping it on its head thing they're trying to be doing trying to do the whole time actually like lands Mm -hmm. yeah and it's like oh this is this is hot this is brilliant actually Mm -hmm. you know i mean i very truly when i started this movie expected okay yeah we're gonna have another fucking mad max gang uh yeah thing because yep. obviously that's what you got. It's a post-apocalyptic desert. That's what you're going to do. They're obviously loving Mad Max with the car stuff. and yeah. yeah. And then it fucking does a 180 just out of nowhere. <laughs> right. <laughs> and the only real foreshadowing, like you said, is they've mentioned him a few times. Yeah. And then you see that van scene from a distance. So mm-hmm. it, it all plays into that trope. And you're like, oh boy, here we go. Oh, yeah. good news. He was also in a movie from 2006 called... AI assault. So oh, shit, we might that be sounds right up our. We might alley. be covering that one. Michael yeah. Dorn oh. also. Ooh. <laughs> anyway. Oh boy. <laughs> let's let's move forward. Yeah. So, uh, we turns, love him, but it turns out uh, he uh, they found the Mustang, and they also found a guy taking a nap in the Mustang, and also in the Mustang. <laughs> this poor fucking bastard. Yeah. They mm-hmm. found a picture of cherry 2000 Mm. that Sam had had earlier, but he left in the Mustang, I guess. Yeah. Um, and he mentions like, Hey, do you recognize this girl? Uh, and Sam's like, no, it's like, well, this is a cherry 2000 model. I really need a memory disc for those. I got a bunch in storage, uh, because then we'll be rich. I don't know, whatever. I think everybody just really wants to bang a cherry 2000. Cherry 2000. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, uh, somebody says, it's like making love to an octopus or <laughs> yeah. something like that. Oh, he says it, but it was, it's yeah. weird, obviously yeah. some weird yeah, window it, yeah, it, that I didn't quite get. <laughs> it's like they got an octopus down there or something. I don't know. Yeah. yeah it's real weird. Um, <laughs> but I'll cut, I'll t- once we finish up with our, our recap, I want to touch back on this. Cause this is where I think I started to get the idea. This is my theory of what the film meant. Okay. Okay. But I'll get there. I'm excited. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. And weird face guy from the hotel shows up again. Yep. And like a fedora. And then we're going to have a fancy grill dinner made on like 28 Weber grills. <laughs> um, it's just like the weirdest suburban. Uh, All at the same time. Party. Yeah. Uh, where and they, they all sit down at a long table. Um, 
and uh, it basically ends up with Lester executing a uh, the random tracker guy who had camped out in the car who was pretending to be a golfer. It's it's actually a pretty great heel turn. Like it really is. Yeah, because he's up to this point like, well, he's kind of a nice guy, and then he like, yeah, he just brutally. He just shoots an arrow, mocks, and, and then uh, another an arrow through this guy's head. Yeah, <laughs> another super meaningful, impactful, like visceral kill. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like he was he's getting ready to shoot movie. him, and you're like, "Oh fuck, is he gonna shoot this guy?" And he's like, "Nah, the gun's not good enough." And then he pulls out the club. bow and no, arrow. Too much club for you. Too much, yeah, because golf. Right. Uh, right. 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 <laughs> oh, and this I guy's just that. a just a dummy. He's just a nerdy wasteland wanderer, and he gets got arrow yeah. to the face yeah mm -hmm. yeah it was it was that just the the whole scene just passing the bag down and then he keeps the trying to pass it on target on that it. was very funny yeah man yeah. it's like funny but also kind of tense like there are parts yeah. of this movie that are good yeah um yeah, you almost you almost imagine like that tense like like violin like is it like growing growing almost mm -hmm. like it kind of is happening too yeah, there's some kind of dissonant music happening. Oh, yeah, uh, the the score for this film was done by Basil Poldoris, who uh, is most famous for doing the Conan films. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah. God, you guys in your research, it's uh, incredible. Yeah, us guys. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> you and Eric guys. both. It's yeah. so good. Yeah. At <laughs> I do the yeah. editing. He does the hard <laughs> stuff. Fair man. Um, yeah, uh, it's a it's a really good and like weird fucking scene. Mm -hmm. Um. And uh, then they're all going to go to bed. Um, and then S Sam sneaks out um, at the s exact same time that E is sneaking in with Jake. Yeah, my favorite scene in the movie, by the way. Okay. I just uh, really, I love the bees. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. The bees. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. fair enough. Um, so Sam's going to sneak out. Uh, he ends up killing the uh, face guy. Um, they set all the other vehicles on fire. Um, and free the bees. Um, he sets a bomb in yeah. a random beehive. I mean, I guess it makes sense having a beehive in post-apocalyptic. Sure. Uh, a lot of mm -hmm. access to honey, although they probably don't have a lot of flowers. Whatever. Let's not overthink it. Not important. Don't worry about it. It, it yeah, thanks, fits Josh. this weird enclave, though. Like this weird, Take like, na <laughs> oh, natural. I don't know. This weird thing they got going. It yeah. Makes sense. I don't. Uh, but anyway, but he, he sets a bomb off in the beehive, and uh, the bees <laughs> get loose. So when... Tim Thomerson goes to chase him. He ends up in the beehive getting the shit stung out of him. He gets Oprah audience. Yes. And then spends <laughs> the rest of the movie covered in calamine, calamine lotion. lotion dots. Yeah. <laughs> and very sensitive about that, too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's He's so pretty stupid. Boy. It's it is, so stupid. It is deeply, deeply stupid. Also, I love that Sam did that classic, like, I'm going to light this and then I'm going to run about a football field link yeah. with this thing lit. Yeah. And I put it in there. I, I just got, it was like, you know, PTSD flashbacks to like saving private Ryan with a sticky bomb. I'm like, <laughs> Oh yeah. Set it down and run away. You dumb shit. Can't you uh, see this? A lot of the things in this movie though, being shadow run. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. This is exactly the dumb shit. The, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And this scene is where Sam kind of proves his worth. Finally, you can tell with Cherry. Yeah, yeah. or Cherry. Sorry, Johnson. E. Johnson. Yeah, it's fucking irritating, right? Well, know, sorry. She lets him. Isn't it right after this that she lets him drive? Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah. But you said earlier that nobody drives my car but me. Yeah. Uh, so uh, yeah, they blow up a bunch of cars and set some bees free, um, and then take off. Uh, and uh, Six Finger Jake goes a different direction. I don't know. It doesn't matter. Don't worry about it. Mm -hmm. um, and they're going to meet. Uh, we're going to they're heading to Snappy Tom's. Um, and this is the point at which uh, Les has some people who pursue him. And he says, uh, keep the sun out of your eyes and be yourselves. You got to chase after him and kill him in our only vehicle. Uh, keep the sun out of your eyes and be yourselves, man. <laughs> that was amazing. Um, and it's at this point that Sam drives the Mustang, uh, gets distracted, staring at E. <laughs> right, it into wrecks, a wall. He wrecks was, it into a canyon wall. He was very smart to not let him drive her mm -hmm. fucking car because he mm -hmm. smashes it right into a yeah. wall. She's concussed. This is where yeah, he's like, she... oh, no, he might have a thing for her. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, and then they shoot the two guys who were told to be themselves and keep the sun out of their eyes. It's also worth pointing <laughs> Yeah, they do. It's also worth pointing out, once again, no 
point were you ever worried that they were in any danger? Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> did we mention that he thinks Cherry's disc is lost forever at this point? Yes. 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 Uh, I had not mentioned that because it kind of doesn't matter. It's only a plot point for four the minutes. Betrayal. Yeah, but that's, yeah. I think that's like the impetus of why he and Cherry, I'm not Cherry, he, Johnson. he and E uh, hook up shortly after this yeah. on the hood of the Mustang. And it's what stops him short from giving Johnson his Johnson. You know, like, wait a minute. You have my fucking cherry. Oh, that's a good yeah. one. Up top. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is, yeah. Oh, Ben, what... your, your volume shot up all of a sudden. Uh, oh, shit. Sorry. Uh, it's okay. How do I fix that? Did you hear that too, Josh? Uh, I did not. Okay, I, that's just on my end. Never mind. I must okay, have look, look normal to me. All right. Okay. I um. Uh, okay. My headphones have a volume dial on them instead of a button. So when I high five myself, I hit that dial oh, up, and both you guys. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Amazing. That's, that's my bad. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> that would do it. So uh, they go to Snappy Tom's uh, gas station. Uh, Snappy Tom is Harry Carey Jr., um, who has been in nine billion movies. Yeah. <laughs> um, and he's so, got a. A young uh, board? A, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, uh, could be a creepy what situation. Did, what did the sign say? It was like it was like brothel. It's something on oh, the dude, gas I, station. I apparently missed it. I did too. That, man, I, sh- I should have watched it twice. It's like casual brothel or something. I sure. don't know. I yeah. don't know. I believe Which it. Bits. Yeah. So Does this mean uh, he's Harry Carey's son. <laughs> no, the ages don't seem to. No, no. Like different Harry Carey. <laughs> Older than his dad. Yeah. <laughs> different Harry Carey. It's all that old style beer, I think. Or at least yeah. the same age. Um, so, uh, oh, shit, he was in a... Gremlins. Yeah. yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah, I'd seen that dude. Oh, he Tombstone? plays that same role in every movie. Yeah. He's, yeah. he's legit. Yeah, he, he really is. Um, he's like the slightly shifty old man that... You know, you can't quite trust. Yeah, he was in like fucking Rio Bravo and yeah. Is he in Back to the Future? There's a. Okay, I believe that. I don't remember it, but I believe it. Yeah, I might be wrong on that. We confirm. Um, okay, so uh, he's got a yellow airplane, um, which doesn't run and obviously can't be made to run except for he's going to do that it, like in five minutes. Yeah, well, you know, it's impossible. She's a. <laughs> She's some type of awesome rigger. She can figure it out. Apparently, yeah. Uh, it doesn't have like wheels or a propeller or spark flux, <laughs> but but she takes care of that like lickety split yeah. in the time it takes Randa to make some macaroni and cheese. <laughs> Randa, <laughs> get the mac and cheese. <laughs> Randa has a bad personality. I think we can all she, agree with she that. She really does. Um, she uh, like. Uh, Lester calls Harry Carey on the radio and is like, we're looking for some people who are trying to get to the fucking robot depot. And Rand is like, oh, they're here. Um, and uh, it's a, uh, we, it, this is the point at which Jake shows up and we get this weird existential speech about dying from him. <laughs> a pretty good one though. It's not bad. It's just, I mean, it, very it's odd. really telegraphs that he's about to yeah. die. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 <laughs> Like he's he's at peace. With like him. I was certain he would be dead. Yeah. Well, it's it's exactly the equivalent of the World War II movie. Like, let me show you this picture of my girlfriend back home. I'm right. gonna marry her. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I only got my tour is only five more days. And then I'm yeah. headed home. <laughs> <laughs> just know. kiss my lucky necklace. <laughs> and I'm walking outside. Yeah, yeah. It's, um, uh, so what did he say? He's like, maybe we become a little piece of wind. Yeah, yeah. a little piece of wind. That's a weird way. Yeah, to... like a little stream of wind. And I was like, that's kind of beautiful. Yeah. Um, so plus he's a good like, actor. He's been in a lot of yeah. movies. Yeah. Uh, Lester and the bad guys shows up, and Randa shoots Jake in the fucking back. Like, just blows him away. Just great character. Mm-hmm. Everybody's come to love. She's Random walking... Randa just blasts yeah. him with a shotgun. Yeah, she's walking out of. She's walking out of the house with a pot of mac and cheese. Uh, and like a serious pot. whap <laughs> mac yeah. and cheese pot. Yeah, mm-hmm. giant mac and cheese pot. And then yeah. oven mitts that <laughs> look like true. fish. That's and true. Appetizer, main course, everything. <laughs> yeah. Mac and cheese. That's all you need, baby. Yeah. 
And then within the oven mitt is apparently a fucking pistol. And she just points this fish-shaped oven mitt at Jake and blows him away. It's kind of a smart it's idea, a, honestly. Yeah. It's great. It's um, an Omar wire moment. Yeah. Type yeah. thing, you know, or you're like, oh, yeah. it's the only way he could have gone down is right in the back. Yeah. Um, There's so many trusts. So anyway, there, there's some more shooting and shit. Um, and uh, fortunately, E has made this airplane run. So she and Sam take off to go to uh, the robot warehouse, which it turns out is in Las Vegas, um, which I think that I th- honestly think that this is the exact same set and special effects they use for Blade Runner 2049. Dude, I, th- I made that comment to mm. Faro when we were watching it. Like there's one. It's the scene where they come down. I don't think it's the same set, but I think no, it's clearly not. I think Blade Runner twenty forty nine <laughs> took some took some. Influence. I don't know. Denis might have this movie took on his notes. radar. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> it looks kind of like one scene from twenty forty nine. He watched this. He watched this movie. He made incendies. Uh... <laughs> it's like I kept expecting Harrison Ford to pop out. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. It's like, keep this sun out of your eyes, like yeah. jotting down notes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yourselves. So, uh, deep. Uh, so they go, and uh, Melanie Griffith warns them that, like, oh, there's going to be all sorts of alarms and shit. It's gonna, we're only going to have like 10 minutes to get in and out. Um, and then suddenly, uh, Lester and the crew is there. Um, apparently, an airplane is absolutely no faster than a bunch of random trucks. Uh, my, my reasoning for this was that Lester and, knew where they were headed and went straight there and they had to like look around or she's a try around person. Nevada. And it was five minutes from. <laughs> yeah. And let's, let's be clear what Lester's in his Jeep or land cruiser, whatever the hell it is. Yeah. And then he's got like a, like a big. Yeah. Uh, a big tow rig with some four wheelers. <laughs> it's a, it's a bread truck. Yeah, that's right. It's just a bread <laughs> yeah. truck. But then when they show <laughs> oh, up, yeah. the bread truck opens and 15 four wheelers drive out of it. And I, I said earlier that it was my favorite scene. This was my favorite scene. I was just laughing at the amount of four wheelers that were pouring out of this 20 by 12 yes. bread truck. Yeah, it was a it was aggressive, like yeah. the amount. And, and, they, and they're like rocking out of the back of this thing. Like that first dude, like almost <laughs> full of wheeling yeah. Yeah. flying out of it. Yeah. And sweet. And, and at, it's at this point that Lester gives the speech. Uh, to remember, gentlemen, life is an adventure, and check the robot room first. Be friendly but firm. <laughs> <laughs> he he has he was been saying the whole time. Oh, we skipped we skipped the part where uh, he executes Randa. Um, oh yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Because as he's confronting Randa and uh, uh, Tom, whatever the dude's the old dude's name Snappy is, Snappy Tom. Snappy Tom. Um, Randa is like trying to suck up to him. <laughs> yeah, she's being annoying. Yeah, not not in a. Nice trying way to climb and, from this shitty gas station and, he, and become he fucking executes her. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Because she needs to work on her personality. <laughs> yeah. You, you keep being reminded that Lester is a bad person. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's like more of that chauvinism to, too. You need yeah. to be reminded of this because 95% of the time that he's on screen, he's being a cool, fun guy. Yeah. <laughs> Just once yeah. in a while, he will motherfucking execute someone. Without which makes the it. best villains right where it's like absolutely you know yeah. you're just like you, you you are having fun watching this person and then it's like tony soprano i feel like his you know? his gang has like a Except health this guy plan. isn't breathing anywhere near as heavy <laughs> <No>. <laughs> but he's got a good health care plan for his guys he, he looks yeah. out for him he'll do he'll do you know low interest loans if they right. need yeah. something right of course free if they don't pay it back he will execute them free gym membership yes uh, yeah you know. But just have a good you, personality. If you don't wipe down the if you don't wipe down the equipment after you get off of it, execution. <laughs> execution. Mm-hmm. Somehow arrow, gun, whatever. Your, your yeah. Van. Something's being crashed <laughs> into your body at a speed too fast for you to survive. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so we get into the robot warehouse and uh, it turns out that it's actually the meatpacking plant from Predator 2. Uh, <laughs> just all Similar. the weird blue lights yeah. and shit hanging from hooks. And we look around and we find a cherry. The shit hanging from hooks are robotic women. Yeah, robot yeah. sex women. Yeah. <laughs> yep. All clearly fake until you get to cherry. Yeah. yeah. All clearly mannequins. Clearly yeah. mannequins. Um, so we find cherry. He uh, sticks the chip in, 
and hey, he's got Cherry back, and he's uh, deeply in love. Um, she is completely heedless of any danger. Yeah, um, this they, is the best part too. Yeah, like she's her performance is so good. I love it. They make out hard. Yeah, and <laughs> he is not happy about it. Yeah, um, and uh, then the bad guys show up, um, and then there's a big shootout running through this robot warehouse, and Cherry uh, has the great line of, honey, I'd rather be watching this on television. Yeah, great line. That was amazing. Another <laughs> another one is like when they're all crouched on a catwalk or something, and he's like mm-hmm. shooting over it, and she's dusting off. Dusting his back. <laughs> oh, hand. that was so good. Yeah, Cherry yeah. is is fantastic. Well, and this is probably this is probably the only a- like full on action scene where it's like typical. I wouldn't say it's an, a great action scene. It's not. But it's I mean, typical eighties. Yeah, it feels like, like a more yeah. traditional for sure. It didn't stand out as bad like the rest of them. It was yeah. just kind of normal, like a, like a Beverly Hills Cop shootout. Yeah, yeah sure. you're just like, yeah, okay, fine. People I mean, are shooting. Some people. The guy fall. rappelling down and then then gets killed and then hangs from his rappelling rope. That's pretty neat. Yeah. That's yeah. Cla- yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Classic, cool kind of stuff. Um, yeah. So uh, we we being the good guys, Cherry E and uh, Sam, Sam escape, um, and they they get out of the building and then. Oh no! Lester is chasing after him, and uh, Sam shoots him, and he falls through the skylight. Mm-hmm. Um, dead forever. Yeah, he's obviously dead forever. Don't worry about it. It's not going to be a problem. Finish it. Um, and uh, so the good guys get to the plane, but now it's too heavy to take off with all three of them. And Sam is the one who's driving the airplane. Apparently, he drives airplanes. He mentioned it earlier. He's he flew yeah. one in the Florida wars. Yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, <laughs> So uh, it's too heavy to take off with him, E, and Cherry. Um, so E and E jumps out. May I so just say, E, what away. a professional. Yeah, like, that's a pro. Yeah. She's getting a five-star review on Shadowrunner Yelp or on <laughs> yeah. Shadowland BBS, whatever. Shadowland, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Runner.net. <laughs> um, that's true. Gave me a free water. You know, turned the music yeah. down when I asked and jumped out when the plane was too heavy. Yeah, what a pro. Uh, so then uh, she like jumps out of the plane and starts shooting at the bad guys from a junk pile. Um, and the junk pile gets a lot of focus for some reason. Yeah. Like the words junk pile are said <laughs> about six times for no reason. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's just like a couple of barrels and like an office chair. Very weird. Um, so she's shooting the bad guys. Uh, uh, Sam and Cherry get the plane off the ground. And then Sam suddenly realizes like, Oh, wait, he jumped out. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, we made it, turns around. <laughs> yeah, so then he uh, spins the plane around, <laughs> lands again, uh, and says, hey, Cherry, honey, will you go get me a Pepsi? <laughs> that was amazing. And I love she, that line so much because it's she, so 80s. She, yeah. She hops out of the plane and says, okay, a Pepsi, and then he leaves. <laughs> the last time Pepsi was relevant. Yeah. Um, I knew that was going to happen too. I was watching it with my wife and I'm like, he's going to kick her ass out of the plane. Yeah. Isn't oh, he? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But there's that really, I mean, again, like it's like decently done. Like yeah. there's like some tension he's flying and she's like, I love you. And he doesn't really answer. So she's like, she like tickles his ear and does like this yeah. thing they do together. And you can see he's like, like, you're not, you're not real. You're yeah. not and real. she's happy to get him a Pepsi because she wants to she serve. That's what she's happy. Yep. Yeah. That's and all that's, she's for. That's not what he wants now because yeah he's met you know a real woman with their own fucking thoughts yeah so and, and i would also and, oh, like yeah. to point out that uh e the sec- whole second half of the movie she, I, she still talks the same way but she seems a yeah. lot more capable than in Engaged. the first age yeah. yeah 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 she's actually yeah exactly i i she you're right the the tone of voice didn't really change but just the way she's acting feels like she's there finally maybe it's yeah. because she's trying to like do that jealous but hiding it thing and maybe mm-hmm. that kind of oh, overshadows the potter thing yeah the what thing joey potter oh yeah the joey potter thing. yeah the season one joey potter thing uh-huh. uh sorry ben we talk about dawson's creek a lot on the show we cannot <laughs> stop it and we, that we I will, will not can, stop it yeah <laughs> cannot will not win that. um <laughs> But yeah, she is kind of doing a Joey Potter thing, which kind of like in the beginning, she's just doing this like I'm a badass thing and she was not pulling it off. Yeah. Yeah. 
Okay. So oh, yeah. and 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 Lester's alive, by the way. Oh right? yeah, he, he crawls up the rope. He yeah, crawled he, back up, and that's why the junk pile's getting so much heat because they've got now the advantage of him being so high, he can see the battlefield that he's directing from the roof. Sure. <laughs> yes. I just thought that scene and was he's funny. A, he's like, about to make a very poor tactical decision. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Um, very interesting. <laughs> so. Decision. Sam, Sam then uh, steers the airplane over by where he is, by the junk pile. Um, and she jumps in. And uh, then Lester, they take off and Lester lassos the airplane um, with the with the rope that people were using to rappel into yep. the robot mm-hmm. graveyard. Um, he had lassoed had, earlier in the movie, too, right? Yes, he yeah. did. Um there was a Chekhov's lasso situation happening. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so he can do that. He yeah. knows how to do that. So he's like, "Oh, you're it, obviously the entire audience is like, holy shit, he's gonna climb up the rope, yep. and kill them, and then he immediately is slammed into a sign made up of showgirls. He goes <laughs> face first into a steel titties of a steel sh- titties. Yeah, yeah. yeah, killed by cleavage. Yeah, yeah, that's amazing. And then he's Didn't just he climb, hanging in was midair. He, was he the one in Nemesis who climbed up the rope into the plane at the end? Or was that a different Oh, character? yes. Uh, it was him, but he but had robot. his face ripped off. And he yeah, was a robot. robot. Yeah. yeah. Um, so he, he's used to this shit. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, Although Nemesis yes, was a few years but, later, actually. Yeah. This one was a miss, but he succeeded in the other one, it sounds like. Yeah. yeah. Well, he got yeah. in the plane. I wouldn't say he, he succeeded. He got into the plane. <laughs> <laughs> so... Uh, so yeah, he slams on the sign and dies. Um, and then Sam and E fly off into the sunset. Um, they're, I don't know, going to do whatever. And then we come back to, and I had neglected to mention how Ginger has been by Lester's side through this entire like second half of their thing. This whole odyssey through the desert, applying calamine lotion to his face, making preparing, sandwiches, preparing sandwiches yeah. for the assault team. Um, so she is now the leader of the wasteland um, with sandwiches and all the other ladies from uh, Sky Ranch. And she gives Cherry, who's just kind of wandering around, a sandwich. And Cherry's pretty happy about it. And she says, it's pretty. Yeah. And that's the end of the movie. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, someone points to Lester, right? They're like, what about Lester? And she says something like he shouldn't have gone in an empty stomach. Yeah. yeah. Or something stupid. Yeah. Oh, he won't need a sandwich then. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's yeah. it. Uh, Ginger, well, great character. For him. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it is fucking wild. Uh, the movie takes a turn at, I don't know, what, 50 minutes? Uh, and uh, yeah. One and of the reasons she's so great is because she's so fucking normal in this mm-hmm. completely abnormal place. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yep. uh, it's, it's a, uh, great. Uh, this movie, uh, I spent the first spent the first 15 minutes of the movie going, all right, sure, whatever. Uh, this is fine. This is a thing I'm watching. And then it turns on a goddamn dime and is just charming as shit. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's that's how I felt, too. I was like, and oh, unexpected because uh, uh, last week or when we talked to Ben about coming on the show, and the movie, you sent me a text like, I'm starting it now. Oh, God, this is a bad movie. And I was like, oh, fuck. And then, <laughs> yeah. and then like last night, we were text, we were messaging very briefly like, oh, I'm excited to talk about this. this yeah. Is- yeah. I literally, I I want to say, I so I, I watched it in two showings. Mm-hmm. And I watched the first, I literally watched up until f- about five minutes before the movie actually picks up is where i cut off oh wow i was like oh my, I was like, oh my god this is fucking bad yeah uh, that'd be and rough I, yeah i went to bed you know and then like a couple nights later i'm like i'm gonna pick this back up I, i'd taken all my notes already in the first half let's finish this thing let's just do it i turn it back on I'm like, i feel so bad that i recommended this fucking movie and then i start watching and about 10 minutes in it just that's where he gets knocked out and he wakes up in the oasis uh-huh. and i'm like oh and then I'm like, oh, and then I'm seeing Lester and I'm like, this is fucking awesome. And now the rest of the movie starts to make more sense. Yeah, the, it makes the first half not as bad, like you said. Yeah, to see the they, they, they did no setup on how, why the world is this way at all. Which I kind of love. Spent, which I kind of love. You know, it all starts to it starts to even out in the end uh, with the way the movie works. But I don't know if any of you have a theory on what the 
I don't know if the movie even has a fucking. <laughs> I feel like point. they're trying to say something about misogyny, yeah, but I don't, I don't know if they get it across fully. Yeah, I don't think it's very well developed. No, but I do think there is an attempt at a bit of a message. <laughs> I, I want to yeah. hear your theory. Yeah. Okay, and this is a little bit mixing in some some recent events in our nation's history, you know, and things like that. But I feel like. You know, okay. There's the bar at the beginning. There's the glory hole, and there's these women. Mm-hmm. Like you said, they they seem to have this like power, and men seem to be like, I just I don't want to deal with that shit. Mm-hmm. Like this is crazy. I just want to kiss. They won't let me kiss her. I got like, legally I can't kiss her, and she's a prostitute. This is ridiculous, kind of thing. And then you see that this guy is going out of his way to get a cherry two thousand, which just does what he wants mm-hmm. and serves him, and is basically just a sex spot built for him. He doesn't have to go through any red tape. It just gets to be the man and she's the woman and knows her place kind of thing. It's a very chauvinistic ideal yeah. that he's, that's his headspace in the movie. Yeah. And then you see this oasis where you hear the ex-girlfriend saying like, it's so much better. I was in a bad place when we were in the city and out here, I don't have to think as much. I don't have to worry about all my problems. And she's basically just, I'm just domesticated wife. I'm a step for, you know, yeah. subservient. I make the sandwiches and I don't have to worry about this place. Mm-hmm. I get taken care of. And so you see like that answer to it all. And then you see chair, like, like almost that enclave, what is it called? Sky, Sky Ranch. Sky Ranch. It's almost like a Trump make America great again. It is. It very much is. You know, like, uh, like, like, let's go back to when, like, wasn't it nice women? You didn't have to think. And men, like, you know, you just did what you did do because you're fucking men. And this is how the world should be. Yeah. And then you get to like, he gets, he learns with Cherry that like, here's this woman that I got, we have like, she, you mean I me? earn her love. Yeah. Like, I mean, there's not much there. Yeah. <laughs> they didn't do much to earn each other's love. Let's be honest. But you like you said, she thinks for herself. She's a real woman. They do more. I feel like their relationship was earned. Like, I mean, the acting isn't the best, but yeah, I, by the time they start making out on the hood of that, uh, that car, they could have done a little more on Sam's part to show him interested in her early on, mm-hmm. in spite of mm-hmm. the fact that he was looking for Cherry. But I don't know. I didn't feel like it was an unearned relationship. So, the, the yeah, the physical part makes sense because she's hot and he, he's been around yeah, her. And I, I don't think Sam's like purely a physical. He he's a romantic guy. They make this very clear. <laughs> he he <laughs> wants yeah. romance. Yeah, he says so himself many times. Yeah. He's a dreamer, much like that, that yeah. sex spot worker who has <laughs> right. The repair. Oh, but that, but that brings up. So, oh, sorry. The last point I'll make yeah. is that even, even Lester, who has built this quote unquote paradise, where he's got everything figured out, and the women know their place, and he's the boss, and this is the way he wants things. Like he even covets the personality of a Cherry Two Thousand because that's the perfect woman in his yeah. eyes. Yeah. Like, you know, like even he would rather go that route and not have to deal with someone challenging him in any way whatsoever even yeah. the potential for challenging him plus bonus got an octopus down there yeah <laughs> <laughs> i love how it all gets reduced like it is true <laughs> they just reduce all of it to just sex i mean it's called cherry 2000 yeah 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 that was my kind of takeaway. I, I think you're it. right i mean i think yeah. that's definitely what they were going for i i don't know how well they pulled it off um yeah i like i think there were execution issues um yeah, but I do think like this movie is better than it deserves to be. Yeah. Uh, speaking of what it deserves, uh, this movie had a ten million dollar budget, and uh, would either of you like to make a guess at how much money it made at the box office? Four, mm, two. I'm assuming those are both millions. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Fourteen thousand. Yes. <laughs> Fourteen thousand dollars. Wow. Two thousand. <laughs> That's amazing. Fourteen thousand dollars. That cost less than certainly less than Melanie Griffith got paid. Yeah. No. Uh, that didn't even cover the plane. I think yeah. Larry Fishburne got paid more probably. Yeah. Um why doesn't why haven't I heard of this movie? And I've, it's the same I way with next week's know. title. Like, I feel like movies like this are good enough to have a cult following. And maybe they do, and I've just not heard of it. But, like, I feel like I should have heard of this before. Because when, yeah. Ben, when you gave me the list of things you would like to cover, that was the first time I'd ever wor- read the words Cherry 2000 <laughs> together. 
<laughs> yeah, and I uh, I had read I had read the words, but only in the context of this is a list of cyberpunk movies. Uh, you know, like mm-hmm. I had no context for it, and I should have heard of this fucking movie. Yeah, I yeah. agree. I feel like we all should have heard it. It's it's yeah. not the best movie in the world, but it's pretty entertaining to watch. It's got shit going on. <laughs> um, speaking of all this stuff, we like to rate films in here. We've got our own patented Oof. high-tech low-life rating system. Uh, okay. It makes no sense, and it's terrible, but it's what we yes. use. <laughs> we, have, Perfect. we have four categories in which we rate it on a 1 to 10 scale. Okay. And then our we have one final category that is a 1 to 5 scale, being 1 to 5 hand raisers. How many? How much do you like it is the final category. Okay. Out of, out of, out of hand raisers, instead of stars, um, how much you like it. But for first, we do the four categories. So the, no, the why four... don't we go through it in fucking order, you idiot? Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. I got carried away. <laughs> Just tried to jump to the end for some reason. Uh, I'm not good. Um, first category is story. How do, you, how do we feel about the story of Cherry 2000? And this is out of four? Out of no, 10. This is out of 10. Out of 10. Don't Sorry. ask me okay. why we switched it up. It made sense when we came up with it. <laughs> okay. Story out of 10. Um, I think the story, actually, the idea of going off into the desert to find a copy of your sex bot wife is very original and actually quite intriguing to me. And it's yeah. what kept me going in the beginning of the movie when it was not as as interesting stuff happening. And on paper, everything in this movie is great. I'm, yeah. I'm going to go like, with the... Eight, I think, for story. Yeah, uh, eight is exactly what I was thinking. Uh, wow. Well, okay. You get to rate two, Ben. So yeah, you don't all have right, to agree. Right. You can you can tell us to fuck off and give it a one. And say I hate this no. garbage. <laughs> <laughs> I recommend I give it all one. Um, I would say I would say eight. Uh, yeah. Okay. You know what? I'll say seven. Seven. That's it's close. See, close. I think. I. I mean, I really think uh, that on paper, like this movie could clearly could have used another draft, mm-hmm. right? Yes. And it needed to be executed at a higher level than it was. Like just yeah. every, virtually every aspect of it. <laughs> Escape from New York is not diff- much different story wise in terms. You know, in terms of like yeah. the camping, no, not right? at all, really. No, yeah. yeah. We've had lots so of movies right. that we liked that got low story ratings. By the way, it's yeah. it's like Burst City <laughs> is a movie we watched <laughs> several episodes back, which I fucking highly recommend you watch sometime. Okay. Um, it got a six for me and a five from Josh for story because it didn't really have much of a story. It was all vibes. Um, okay. Wow. So you're considering this better story. The first city. Yeah. But first city I is mean, <laughs> well, first city it, story is uh, punk rockers uh, and mutants team up to fight Yakuza. That's pretty much it. Oh, and cops. Wow. Don't forget. And they cops. kill a lot of cops. It, okay. That's a, <laughs> um, it's an amazing movie. Uh, well, and also remember that like, okay, at least in my mind, um, story in this film encompasses the like, okay, suddenly two thirds of the way through, we're going to switch and, yeah. and you know, we're yes. going to have a blackout yes. and suddenly we're in a completely different fucking movie. True. <laughs> also looking here, I gave Snow Crash a five. Sure. That's, that's wow. brutal. That is brutal. I'm sure it made sense at the time. Uh, yeah. My second category is influence. Uh, what this film had on films that came after it. Do you think anybody took any influence from this and it's it's one of those movies like it it could have but there's no real like fourteen thousand dollar box office yeah (laughs) yeah the only thing like the only thing that makes me think it had any influence at all and it could just be the coincidence of when i was watching it Mm -hmm. but the fallout tv series gave me some cherry 2005s Mm -hmm. um I don't know if that, you know, if the stuff that made me think that is also in the game uh, or the games, but I think it had at least a tiny bit. I think it I had mean, some too. I think giving it like yeah. the one or two, which a lot of these B movies get because, you know, they, yeah. nobody cares nobody about them. fucking saw him who gives a shit. I feel like there's somebody that watched this and like, man, I'd like to make movies. <laughs> that was, that yeah. was a fun to watch. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, uh, there's plenty of influence I'm, influences. I'm going to take it. That's I'm true. Sometimes like we four. rate it on that too. You're going to yeah. four. I'm a, I was going to go three. Yeah, I'd go three. Yeah. I, I, 
until proven otherwise. Like I would not be surprised if Quentin Tarantino said this is one of his favorite movies or something. Yeah. It wouldn't surprise me at <laughs> that all. It does seem sure. like one of his weird. I didn't see enough feet for that. Go ahead. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> uh, prescience is another one we use. Like the dystopia of this world. How likely do we think it's, it is mm. to come to pass? Um, cult leader in the desert trying to make America great again. <laughs> um, Rampant misogyny. Yeah. Um, sex robots. It's not, yeah not unrealistic i'm gonna stick it dead in the middle with a five yeah i i like five yeah five it's it's funny I, you know one day one time i was talking with dan about a movie we were just talking about like ideas and he had an idea for a, a movie he wanted to make and he, he, it was just like spitballing mm-hmm. and he's like it, the movie starts off and a guy is fucking a like a sex doll but it's like a sex robot type thing but obviously fake uh-huh. and his wife is sitting on the bed like reading a newspaper next mm-hmm. to it and it was like supposed to be this dystopian setup right, right. like this per this is how sex has be like become so divorced from from uh, intimacy and marriage yeah, intimacy yeah. and whatever right and, and i think that's all he kind of had <laughs> i mean it's <laughs> but, a compelling opening yeah, yeah it is and i was like the whole time i'm watching cherry 2000 i'm thinking the same thing and i think he was trying to think in terms of how things are now right yeah. where it's like we don't really we, you know, we obviously still, the sex is still there for obviously procreation. There is it's, lots of access to, to pornography. Yeah, exactly. and, yeah, yeah, but it's very recreational. Yeah. And so there's a very, you know, it's very different from it was 200 years ago or whatever. Right. Maybe it is. I don't know. Uh, maybe so, it's, maybe prescience should be higher than five. I, I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. I just, I couldn't kind of talk me into a six. I'm going to change mine to a six. <laughs> I love how flippant you are with it. Oh my God. These ratings well, mean nothing. We've long I'll ago flip it too. Six. We've, we've right. long ago realized that these ratings are fucking nonsense. Josh actually gets mad sometimes when we have to do them at the end because I make him. Okay. Yeah. Our final one to ten category is style. What do we think about the style of this film? And I think it's I think it's got it. I think it's got plenty of it. It really does. Uh, I'm gonna go a seven, but Ooh. like I lean. I lean almost higher simply because like that fucking switch yeah. where we wake up yeah. at Lester's is such a, it is a breath of fresh air. I'm going to go, yeah. I'm going to go eight because uh, like the little shit, like the sun sunblock on all of the dudes yeah. in the desert, like, noses. The desert. Yeah. they need sunblock. Yeah. Um, and just, yeah. Like the, the dad gang uh, man mm-hmm. yeah it's just like it is such a breath of fresh air not for even just this movie mm-hmm. but for movies yeah <laughs> like it's, yeah like you spent 50 minutes or 45 minutes going okay yeah we're uh, fucking wasteland uh cars driving fast in the desert guns bombs and then suddenly Fucking Hawaiian shirts. This very and well could little, have influenced little somebody. straw pork pie hats. Somebody yeah. who made Fallout could have watched this movie and got some ideas. Yeah. You're absolutely That's right so about true. that. That's so true. I give it an eight too for that same reason. It's that second half or second third, I guess it is. Yeah, is is so style so stylized and yeah. and, and and well and and perfectly realized. Like yeah. the first two thirds, it's like not sure what it's doing. Well, the very the first time- city scenes are just like. Just a standard '80s movie. Just deeply fucking yeah. boring shit. Yeah, boring shit. Once and they get they to the glory to make, hole, though, it starts to pick up a little. Yeah, it start. They start to try to make Ryan James and enough. his coke nail. Yeah, I keep thinking too of the scene where they're where they're looking for the cherry in the robot warehouse and those those flashlights uh-huh. uh, yeah. that had just yeah. the random two yeah. plexiglass. I, I noticed those too. That was that was yeah. weird. They they took the time to make prop flashlights. Good for them. It, it didn't yeah. really. Yeah, it didn't really do anything. Still flashlight. And they kind of made it a worse flashlight. Yeah. <laughs> and, and and I just thought like the first two thirds of the movie were all that. Yeah. It was all that like these cheap, small set dressings and prop dressings to make it feel future when it future of 2017 mm-hmm. when oh. it wasn't at all. Uh, but the th- last third felt literally like a different world. Give me a sunken yeah. kitchen with a with a bubble washer. <laughs> Please. Yeah. Make it real. Okay, our last one, like I mentioned, is the one to five. How much did you enjoy watching the movie? Just overall, um, this can be highly subjective. I think I'm going to go with a four. Mm. Pretty high. Out of five? Out of five, man. I liked it. I enjoyed... I've, we do a lot of these, and I'm, I'm a lot of time I'm checking my watch. Like, when is yeah. this shit going to be over? And I 
if I don't check my watch, it usually means I'm enjoying myself. Yeah, uh, I'm I'm doing three point five. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's, I mean, just because this is a shockingly entertaining movie for a how it looks when it starts, yeah, mm-hmm. and b the fact that I literally never heard of it. Yeah, I mean, you know, it has no right to be as entertaining as it ends up being, yeah. and even, right. and especially it. It manages to overcome a level of incompetence that's shocking. <laughs> <laughs> I would be, I'd be interested to see if it was picked up or, or directed by somebody else at a certain point. I would, or think. you know, I mean, what I mean? Could like be, I yeah, wonder, if, could have been like somebody else, like took the first half and like, all right, I guess yeah, I gotta do something. With yeah, this. I, like a Ben Hur yeah, situation. Yeah, type I, w- thing, I would know? totally fucking buy that. What do you think yeah. it is, Ben? Okay, I got so in in the spirit of of making these not matter at all. Yeah, I'm going to give you two ratings. Okay, okay, sure. I'm, I'm going to rate the first rating to be a two. Okay, based on watching it in full with someone with me, I would not be excited to do this again. I had already had to go through this pain once. Yeah, I recommended this thing, and then you guys had to watch it. And I felt terrible for it. Um, even knowing that it pays off in the end, I mm-hmm. just that that's a painful. So two, but if I knew I could skip through most of it like started off pretty much skip through it and watch the last third again i'd give it a four okay yeah. fair like that the, just the best parts like you know are are that good i i i didn't hate the beginning as much as you guys i like i agree <laughs> w- with what you're saying but i think the second half pays off the beginning well enough that i could sit through the beginning again and, and watch it i would happily like we've talked in the past about movies that would be good to be like put on at a party and have playing in the background. I think this would be one of those just for the weird imagery and, and stuff. And I, I don't know. I, I was a fan. I was surprised, yeah. but I, but I was a fan. Wow. You're a patient man. Well, I'm also like, uh, really not picky. Illiterate. I'm illiterate. <laughs> I like most things. <laughs> you like the work. <laughs> yeah. I love the work. I like the to Warcraft. like things. Um, so it's got to well, be. Pretty I am a hater. That's refreshing. Yeah, Josh, I, I am a hater, hater too. I am I'm famously hater. a hater. So I'm a bubbly hater. I'm bubbly. I surprise people because they're like, "You must be. You're so positive." And I'm no. I hate everybody. <laughs> but I can. I can say it in a way that's. I, I'm laughing and jovial about it. <laughs> yeah. I, I I used to be that way. I I don't know. I made a switch at some point when I realized that I was miserable and hated everything, <laughs> and I was like, I've got to try to hate less and. I've tried when I watch something for the most part. Now there are some things we've done here that I have not been able to go into with a positive outlook, anything starring Jean-Claude Van Damme for the most part. Yeah. Hmm. But I try to go in thinking I'm going to enjoy this and uh, prove me That's wrong. Refreshing man. Yeah. Especially on a dystopian podcast. Well, yeah, uh, because the future. beginning of our show is always such a bummer. <laughs> and then we do movies like girl with the dragon tattoo. <laughs> Oh, come on. That's just a that's just a fun romp for the entire family. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's not. What was I listening to? One of your episodes uh, was the Aeon Flux. Oh, yeah. And I think you guys start off like it con- it contributes. I'm pretty sure it contributes nothing to society. And I'm like, just wait till they watch this. <laughs> yep. Wait till they watch Sherry 2000. Oh, man. I would but, prefer to watch this a thousand times before I have to watch the Aeon Flux live action movie one more oh, time. Yeah, me too. Honestly. That yeah. is so amazing. It, I didn't watch that one. Don't. It's it's, it's got just, nothing. It's yeah. Vapid. It is. It, for the amount of the amount of theoretical good shit they collected for that movie, source material: Charlie's Theron, Karen Kusama as the director. Right. They came so up, much going for it. It had so mu- like so much chance to be cool, and yet it came to negative numbers. Yeah. I mean, just like somehow everything canceled everything else out and you're just sitting there going like, what the fuck are we doing yeah, here? Not, not fun, bad, just boring, bad. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. Just a dreadfully boring film. Uh, speaking of boring things, uh, this podcast is reaching the maximum levels. Three hours. That, I mean, oh, not, that, Jesus Christ. not that I'm bored, but I'm afraid <laughs> that anybody who's stuck around this long is like, Ben, promote long. your shit quickly. <laughs> I, 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 <laughs> I've been for Pink Fohawk. We're a Shadow Run podcast. You can check us out anywhere on podcast places. Uh, just Google us and then um, minimize the real Pink Fohawks that show up in images. And we are 
second or third in line there. And by the way, it is F O H A W K, not F A F A U X. Yeah, H-A-W-K. it is spelled incorrectly. Yeah. Yes, so that usually helps us. Um, but yeah, we are we are an actual we're a t- tabletop actual play podcast. We play Shadowrun, but we're pretty fun. And as you said, we did we were nominated for an any. So that's them saying we're good. I'm not saying that, but we do have a good time. Well, I'll also say it because uh, I love the show. I'm a big fan. And thank you so much for coming on. Also, check out uh, Pink Fohawk's Discord. Pretty cool Discord. Honestly, a little much for me to keep up with at times because you got mm-hmm. a lot of it's active. a lot of talkative yeah. dudes in there. But yeah. um, still, another great community spawned by a podcast, and I love those things. That's true. There's a lot of cool people. Eric, you're in it. In Josh, it. did you join it? Not to put you on the spot. Uh, yes, I have. Uh, I do not check very often because it is just the quite level of busy <laughs> that I. I like, understand. My thing. Uh, my thing with discords and stuff like that is that I, I can only handle a certain amount. <laughs> like yeah. otherwise, I just feel this insane pressure. Like, well, obviously, I have to read everything, and I'm gonna. Die. It's like a doom scroll. Yeah, it's like information overload. Totally. But they like yeah. they like do morning greetings when yeah. I click like yeah they're posting all the time in there so. we kind of have like a like a sky ranch yeah it's yeah. a sky ranch absolutely <laughs> like, good morning good morning Copy that makes you the tim stuff. thomerson uh-huh. uh, I, i'm okay with that that's pretty amazing <laughs> yeah <laughs> all right you were thank you guys for having me man this you know so nutrition fun. is very important <laughs> it is keep the sun out of your eyes be yourself so we like to end by josh uh he usually prepares and definitely doesn't come with on the fly a, a memorable quote from the movie and we sign out with that so josh do you have a final thought in fact i do but uh guess what we're gonna do first oh we're gonna announce what we're doing next week yes yeah sorry i <laughs> forgot about that we've already said yes. it we're covering a similar vibing film called uh, Split Second, starring Rutger Hauer. Yes, 1992. Ooh. It is a wild-ass fucking movie. And I believe I'm going to release <laughs> concurrently with this on our Patreon, our watch-along of, with it, as Josh and I watched it for the first time each and uh, discovered our thoughts on it. So if you remember the Patreon, that'll be out. Well, it's out right now. Yeah, and uh, just in case you're on the fence, understand that uh, Rutger Hauer shows his badge to a dog not as a funny joke. No. He shows his badge to a dog to identify himself as a policeman. To the dog. <laughs> to the dog, yeah. which is a normal dog. Yeah. Not a robot dog. <laughs> Just a dog. Nope. Just a fucking dog. Only Rutger Howard could pull that off, and you're like, that's pretty, that's fine. It's it's a wild fucking movie. Oh, I gotta see that. Yeah. It's uh, it's highly recommended it's was well, we're doing amazon? spoiler alert right? um yeah. yeah it's on amazon just like this was Jerry oh Dwight. shit okay yeah i'm watching yeah. all right josh send us out <clears throat> oh i lost my place uh remember gentlemen life is an adventure so good bye everybody Bye-bye. bye this has been the high tech low life podcast Find us on Twitter at Johnny60Seconds, email us at HighTechLowLifePodcast at gmail.com, and find us on Patreon at Patreon.com slash HighTechLowLife. Theme music by Nihilor at Nihilor.com. Thank you for listening.